Um, um, so what case. seems to be going on here? White's, White is heavily defending his d3 pawn, another awkward backwards pawn. Um, Black has the pass pawn on a5 that might become handy later on. At the same time, e5 is also going to become a threat at some point. So right. there's a lot of different uh, weaknesses going on for both sides, making it pretty uneven and the position I, is I'm in, equal material. I'm to, to, oh, I'm at least looking at the move rook c5. Um, mm -hmm. Because the bishop's tied to the e pawn, I'm sort of curious what he's going to do after rook c5. I have the idea to maybe play the move b6 and right. deflect your bishop from one of the two pawns that I'm now attacking, whether a5 or e5. Um, so rook c5 looks like a move I would consider because if you kick me with b6, you give me that nice rook c6 square, and again rook c5 prevents this move that we see on the board, bishop b6. This move looks like a well, well-placed bishop, and I'm not sure. So, so you prefer white here? Well, let's say. Oh, well, not anymore. Let's say I maybe did prefer white because now we see bishop on b6, controlling with the pawn on b7, all the c file squares. We might see rook f7 or rook f8 right now, or maybe both. Mm -hmm. And rook comes into f2 as an idea. Um, it's just that if I play rook f7 right now, you can't play rook f1. I can take right. and take on d3. Right. So you have to play this move, and no, this is shifting. Uh, I think in Black's favor, especially with that outside A pawn that you always have to consider, um, Black Black is probably uh, preferred here. Right. Welcome everyone to the uh, Pro Chess League coverage. I'm uh, Grandmaster Mon Hamilton. I'm joined by Women's Feed A Master Alexander Botez. Good to be here, Amon. How are you uh, today, Alexandra? I'm good. I'm excited to be doing commentary with you today. I've watched the chess for us for a long time, so big fan. It'll be big fun. fan. Exactly, big fan. <laughs> Any yeah. other chess bra fans in the chat, let us know. Put those flexing emotes, you know. That's right. Yeah, we have to make Get the, the commentators flex. excited. This is uh, going to be a, a, a fun one, Alexandra. Cap. Pardon? I said this is going to be a fun one, Alexandra. I'm excited. Oh, I agree. I agree. This is a dynamic duo of commentators that people just haven't seen. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Well, you know, once you see this duo, you can never go back. So <laughs> get excited, chat. Get excited. Um, I think the last time that I was uh, commentating was with Robert. <laughs> which was another 
person that I haven't commentated with. So I feel like some sort of gerbil that they're throwing around and just just <laughs> testing with all of the uh, all of the regular commentators. Yeah, don't worry. We're all secretly taking notes on you and then sharing it after with uh, chess.ca, but it will work. Yikes. Well, the, we're covering the uh, Central Division today. Um, for those that uh, don't know, this is the last division that's going to play out for this week's matches. And mm -hmm. um, I'll just bring up some of the um, pairings for, for today so we can uh, see exactly what we're, what we're dealing with. Um, so... The first one uh, that we have here has the Marseille Migraines uh, and the Baden-Baden Snowballs. Um, mm -hmm. th this features some of the, uh, the big names. We've got MVL uh, in there on, on board one for Marseille and uh, also Georg Meyer for the Baden-Baden Snowballs. So definitely some, uh, some big names uh, in that one. Yeah, and uh, the Marseille Migraines have a lot of pressure because they're in the bottom two right now. So uh, they definitely want to make sure that they're doing better and at least not get relegated while the Snowball's are already in the top three. They've been playing really well so far this season. Right. Um, the Berlin Bears and the Ljubljana Turtles uh, are also playing today. And uh, last time we actually saw the Bears play the Snowballs, which was uh, the Battle of, of Germany. And, right. And... Uh, this week, though, we see um, it looks like a really sort of similar lineup, but also one thing to note, the Turtles have Laura Yunuk, uh, Women's International Master playing on board four, helps the, um, helps the average rating, right? It's a, yep. You get that 100 points extra? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so their, their average rating would be over 2,500 then. Right. Um, and also, we can check out the other... Matchups here, we have the Barcelona Raptors against the Cannes Blitzstreams. And I see here, um, one thing to note, I think you were mentioning to me that the Barcelona Raptors are, are a team to watch out for, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and a big reason for that is that their board four, international master Alejandro Diaz, has been performing about 2,700 so far in his first four games. So he's definitely a heavy hitter on board four. Right. Um, also, the Amsterdam Mosquitoes. Um, I think last time that I was watching the Mosquitoes, um, it was uh, Wouter Spolman. I don't actually see him in the lineup. Uh, I have to say that this Mosquitoes lineup looks looks pretty skinny, Alexandra. <laughs> that that's not you know that there's not a single player actually over 2,500. Right. Um, do you do you think they had any reason for making the team like this, or perhaps their players couldn't make it today? Yeah, I don't. I don't think when you have this that you're dealing with strategy. Um, yeah, it's normally not the case. Uh, usually, uh, players are just busy. This is a busy time of year. You've got Gibraltar, uh, as well as obviously Tata Steel's on right now, um, and, and some tournaments are are coming up. So that's yeah, most that's... likely why, because they're up against a Norway Gnomes team that is looking uh, very very ready. I think this is the exact same team actually that that we had last week for them. They didn't change a single thing. Well, then it seems like the Norway Gnomes are going to be the favorites in this matchup, despite being a little lower ranked right now in the overall standings. So it'll be an important matchup for them to get up there. Right. Yeah, this is the, uh, I'm just bringing up one of the first matches here. Um, I have Tari um, against Yasso Lopez uh, on the screen here. But this is the, the match that we were just talking about there, the Amsterdam Mosquitoes. And the Norway Gnomes are the uh, the first match that that has got underway here. And uh, just based on you know on paper, it looks like uh, they are a, a favorite. Um, the Norway Gnomes, just based on you know not a single player over twenty five hundred. That doesn't mean that they're winning for sure, but not bad to start off. Right. Well, it'll be fun to see if our predictions actually end up being accurate. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Chad, if you guys have any predictions for this game, let us know. We don't want to be the only ones who are wrong today. So, <laughs> yeah, let's see it, Chad. Yeah, no, we, we are you making any bold predictions, uh, Alexandra, for, for the matches today? Can I press you? Uh, I'm going to say that the Barcelona Raptors fourth board is going to continue to upset some of the stronger players. Okay. Barcelona Raptors fourth board, someone to watch out for. Is that your, that's your dark horse for today? 
I have this、uh, pattern of always cheering for the underdog, the overperforming underdog. So I'm kind of cheating, but that is my dark horse、yeah. for the day. Yeah, I really like cheering for that guy who has a documented success recently. Yeah, exactly. Oh,、uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about yourself?、Uh, I would say that、uh, another another thing to watch out for is on the turtles.、Uh, Laura Yunuk on board four. Is、uh, I mean she's a former、uh, world champion if if I'm not mistaken、um, in the world youth so、mm-hmm. she she、uh, I mean on board four that's a, that's a pretty dangerous player、uh, to be playing there so I, I I'm gonna say that's my dark horse pick for today as well. Okay, makes sense.、Um, you are right. She was the under sixteen world champion for for girls. So right, impressive player for sure. Yeah.、Um, So yeah, I have this、uh, I have this scheme of Tari、um, up on my screen right now, and we've just seen the move Knight A4,、uh, hitting、okay. this C5 pawn. Yep, I'm following the same game as you right now. So it seems like it was an English opening.、It、makes sense that、uh, FM Lopez would start with something a little bit more solid, unless it's a line he already plays. He is playing a higher-rated opponent.、Right. Um, what would your strategy strategy be if you're playing somebody over twenty six hundred? You're a fourth board. You're trying to get at least a draw in the first game. Right. Yeah. I I always caution against playing for a draw if you want to draw.、Um, mm-hmm. I I feel like sometimes when when you you employ that strategy that it backfires. Like. You know,、mm-hmm. you try too hard for a draw, you're you're bound to lose. And、yeah. uh, I just don't like his recent decision. Giving up that dark squared bishop、uh, does not look right、um, for what I'm seeing here. Just based on the pawn structure, I'd I'd rather、right. have maybe a move like queen c7 here, keep the queens on the board,、um, bring that rook to d8 with tempo, maybe b6 if we need to defend that pawn. And、uh, you know, the the black king is a little bit looser without that bishop around. But the knight on b2 is just looking really weird to me. Yeah,、um, no, that's that's a good point you make. Normally, when you have two fianchetto bishops, black had bishop g7, white had bishop b2.、Uh, the bishop that's closer to your king is more important because you don't want to weaken the dark squares.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's more about at the moment whether I guess white can can exploit them in any way. Like,、uh, not that this is a entirely logical continuation, but let's say queen d6、uh, mm-hmm. was played here, rook d8, queen f4. And if that queen can sort of like maybe get into h6 and, and knight g5, these are the type of attacking ideas that that you need to to utilize against the the black king. But you know, black always has moves like knight f5 to to kick a queen out of h6. And again, this knight this knight on b2. I mean,、uh, you don't fianchetto knights. That's just not、yeah. what you do. Wait, you don't? Oh, this is news. Okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's news to you, but it's also news to Fide Master Yasuo Lopez. Right, right. right.、Um, so we'll let him. Oh.、Know. And- And and what we were saying about the draws actually reminded me of a, a quote my coach used to say: "The best play, the wet, best way to play for a draw is to play for a win." So that's that's a good point you made. Never just go play for a draw. It seems、uh-huh. like the wrong mentality. Yep, I agree with that.、Um, so、and、I'm, I'm going to check at... to see if any of the other games started yet. Yeah, I have.、Um, I think that the games from the Blitzstreams Barcelona Raptors just got underway.、Um, there's also other games in this match here. Um, between、uh, the gnomes and the mosquitoes to take、right. a look at, but I would say that let's say in this position, Tari big time advantage, a huge time advantage actually so far in this in this game, and、uh, feeling comfortable, not nothing、right. to worry about. So then, from from Tari's perspective, since he doesn't have his bishop on g7, how would you suggest he continues on with the plan here? So queen e1 has been played, which is. Probably very true to the style we've seen so far. He's just trying to trade pieces off, and that's what it looks like.、Um, I can just envision an endgame where you know we've got this dark square pawn on c5, and that just dictates the entire structure, meaning that Black's bishop is going to be a little bit better than White's in terms of what it can attack.、Um, th- this pawn chain there for White. So Queen e1 、uh, again. I was sort of more in favor of like a Queen c7 type of move because I could feel that White was really just trying to trade, trade, trade. Um, mm-hmm. But something like queen c7, rook d8, b6. I don't think you need to、uh, force anything too much here because clearly white is sort of trying to trade those pieces off and not playing too ambitiously. And、right. like you said, when you're trying to play for a draw, you're going to give up these small concessions 
as you as you go on because you're just trying to trade. And I think eventually that might amount to, to an end game advantage. And certainly it already has amounted to a time advantage. Right. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Grandmaster Atari just moving queen c7 here instead of taking the queens and continuing on with keeping the position a little bit more complicated instead of just trading off right away. Right. Right. So he's played queen c7. Um, again, I would have played it after, you know, just initially because the queen can now go to c3, which looks a bit better. Um, but how, how are his teammates doing? I'm seeing some, uh, I'm seeing Johan Solomon against uh, Liam Vrolik, um, which looks a lot closer, let's say in terms of time. But mm -hmm. normally in these positions, if, <laughs> if white is uh, getting everything on the queen side here, it, it starts to look, um, it starts to look kind of nice, just, just structurally. Right. White definitely has a nice space advantage already. Um, his, Black has a pretty powerful knight on e4 right now. And white's knight on h2 is a little bit awkward, but I imagine it's not too difficult for white to reroute his knight around and the attack he has going on the queen side more than compensates for it. Right. Um, so let's say pawn takes here. How, because white's plan is rather easy to understand, um, just right. in terms of, you know, we've got a weakness on on uh, c6. And um, for black, though, it's more about attacking the attacking the king. So how, how is black actually going to mobilize to to attack here? Because knight on e4, you always got to be careful that that bishop can always be protected. So that move like f3 doesn't win a piece in a weird way. Mm -hmm. um, Moves I mean, like it knight seems... takes d5 don't quite work. Does that escape square for the king? So, you know, there's there's nothing like that tactically to worry about just yet. Yeah, it seems like maybe black can consider g5 a little bit later on if his entire plan here is to attack on the king side. Otherwise, if he doesn't have any type of aggressive plan, he's just going to be defending the backward c6 pawn for the next couple of moves. Right. G5 might be a bit bold, though. Yeah, I think, and it, you don't have to shy away from moves like that if you're playing black. Like, you don't have to be concerned about, let's say, weakening the king side, because at some point, I feel like these types of moves are almost almost required in, in the position to to get something uh, get something going there. Right. But yeah, th this position, I have to say, for uh, the Mosquitoes, looks very reasonable. Uh, definitely nothing wrong with black's position. It's pretty standard, actually, to you know, sort of short-term defend a weakness like the pawn on c6, but long-term, uh, you know, there's there's a king side uh, waiting to be attacked, so. Right. Um, yeah, so, so far, at least in this game, the Mosquitoes are doing pretty well. I know we said that they have a skinnier team this matchup. Skinnier, And by yes. we, I mean you said. Uh, <laughs> well, I think so, that's a very appropriate word for uh, a team that does not feel at 2,500 plus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> A malnourished roster. Yeah. Make, make, uh, okay, I was going to make a mosquito joke, but then I realized it's not very nice with <laughs> how mosquitoes spread diseases and being skinny. Anyway, so <laughs> next and next. No, those, that sounded like a great joke. I, that, you can say those. Um, the other uh, game in this uh, match, I'm just uh, flipping through here. Um, Christian Stuvik Holm is playing uh, Miguel Admiral. And uh, again, I just sort of flip here because I'm looking at a potential big time difference, you know, nine minutes to, to less than five uh, already. Yeah. What and, do you think uh, of the pawn they're, structure they're here, in... Alexandra? So Black has an isolated pawn on E6, and he doesn't seem to be taking advantage of the isolated pawn position. He His pieces aren't much more active around it. White's already putting pressure on it. It seems like Black is going to get into a worse endgame here. Right. Worse endgame would be very uncomfortable. I'm expecting, um, I was going to say I'm expecting rook c1 because it's really annoying when you have that queen on c8, bishop on c5 to deal with the knight jumping in uh, anywhere, moves like knight a4 uh, into b6, for example. And mm -hmm. uh, knight g5 is not a move I would really rush with because I'm a little scared about f2 being being tender but mm -hmm. um again move like knight g5 maybe then knight to e4 hits the bishop covers f2 kind of feels like a nice regrouping there yeah i mean black's pieces are super awkward here his queen is stuck protecting the e6 pawn white's rooks are free to just come on the open file and bully the queen around um 
Yeah, that, that, it's a very natural, you know, bringing rooks to the open file. Black's queen keeps going to the open files, so it's just getting yeah. uh, get, getting pushed around, like you said. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, not, so, not a great position for, for the mosquitoes in this one. Um, nope. But definitely, uh, there's always these counterattacking options, like tucking that bishop away on a7. I think that we're going to see a move like like knight b6. I don't know if we'll see exactly that. Maybe... Yeah, he, he goes yep. to b6. I think that bishop was just so dangerous hitting hitting f2, and now you minimize all the risk. Yeah, uh, knight d5 makes sense. He also doesn't want to let white place his rook onto c7. Yep. The knight is secure on d5, but the pawn on e6 is not secure. And once you get rid of that, then the knight, you know, it, it all it all happens. So um, yeah. this position, I mean, though, looks looks good for... Um, looks good for for white. Um, he's just got to deal with uh, you know some of these weird knight h three moves, stuff like that. Yeah. Obviously, knight e two is a big threat here, but I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll see that one. Yeah, exactly. And what you're pointing out is also related to one of the advantages when you get an isolated pawn in this position because it also opened up the semi open file for the rook on f eight. So black's best chance is to try and attack both using his knight on e2 and h3, or maybe potentially bringing in his rook at some point. Right, right. Um, and uh, the last game in, in that match um, is between David Klein, who's uh, 2492. No, you might be thinking that, hey, that's a board three. That Nope, that's the board one right there. Um, okay, um, we just... I, we keep I, for a second. I thought we were looking at the same player every game. You know, the ratings were just so similar. Right, so, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Okay. Yeah, just keeping you up to date. Um, Perfect. And this game uh, looks like, and obviously in the first round, you do have the board one against the uh, board four. Um, mm -hmm. So we got the board one grandmaster twenty four hundred ninety two, and uh, he's playing a grandmaster, and that doesn't mm -hmm. happen very often for like a board one against a board four matchup. Um, right. So actually, this is a pretty competitive game, but David Klein, he's going to have to win games like this if his team has any chance of, of winning, right? You know, when you're playing yeah. board four, that's when you have to score. Yeah, I, I'm, I want to see how David has been doing so far. Okay, so he's well, he's played four games so far, and he's performing exactly around his rating, actually. 24.92. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> that's exactly his rating, yes. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's that's this match right now. Um, what about some of the other ones? I see some of the other matches getting underway, like the Blitz streams against the Raptors. Um, mm -hmm. Seems to be underway there. Um, yeah. What are some of the interesting games there? As I'm just taking a look at those. Right. Just bouncing around here. Um, so Grandmaster um, Maxime Lagarde against International Master Alejandro Diaz looks pretty interesting because Black is already starting an aggressive kingside attack. White is trying to defend it. So maybe we can take a look there before uh -huh. Black figures out a way to win and it, the game is over forever. Yep. I'm there right now, but uh, obviously you're not very materialistic there, Alexandra, because uh, there's an extra pawn there for White. Don't discount that. That's true. I guess I thought that the extra pawn wasn't that big of a deal since Black looks like he has a pretty serious attack and uh, the ex the missing pawn also opened up the rook on the B file. But you bring up a good point. I uh, tend to discount pawns a little, a little more than I should. So how would you evaluate this position? Well, I think it really just depends what kind of person you are. Uh, whether you look at what a person has or whether you just go off their looks. So, uh, you know, are, are, you, are you actually looking at, at what White has uh, here, what, what he's bringing to the table, or are you, are you just going off uh, how good Black uh, looks in this position? I think, I think that's really what, what it boils down to. Well, it's not just how good Black looks in the position. You also have to take into account the fact that he's a slightly stronger player. He's uh, probably yes, right. played positions like this. Yeah. So yeah, no, all yeah. good points. And of course, the, the king side attack is, is totally valid. H5 and G4. And as soon as that happens, you know, as soon as G3, F3, those are moves that you almost, you just don't calculate. You just open the position up and you know that stuff like that is, is going to work. Um, mm -hmm. Bishop F5 is an annoying move in the sense that if you play Bishop D3, uh, then I can take that, grab the B2 pawn, and essentially I have everything that you just described but maybe now I also get my pawn back, so so that. So could be, uh... it seems like you might be changing your mind about this position here. 
Um, I don't know if I'm uh, changing my mind. I'm just trying to present a completely unbiased opinion. Uh, and honestly here, if, if I was playing white, I might play the move bishop d3. Um, bishop and let's, d3. Let's say takes, takes, rook takes b2, um, maybe knight d2 there. And I'm looking at that position and saying maybe I'm threatening knight b3. I don't know if trapping the rook is actually dangerous there. Mm -hmm. um, I might be just planning knight back to f3 from h2, knight into e4. And I feel like the attack is a lot less scary without that light squared bishop. Right. No, it does make sense that if, if white is able to trade off black's more pow most powerful piece here, and if he's able to survive the attack, then black's pawns on g5 and f4 are looking pretty awkward. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. So this one, uh, the other one I wanted to take a look at was actually um, Grandmaster Krikor um, is playing for the Kyle Grandmaster Krikor, Brazil, yes. what's up? Come on, chat. Every time I go into... Is that what you say? I mean, that's not what I say. That's what chat says. No, but I was wondering if every time you go into the stream, that's what you say in real life. Actually, it is. And then I start <laughs> chanting, vamos, 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 vamos. It's yeah. really weird for my roommates, but they've gotten used to it by, by now. Yeah. Right, right. Um, he's, he's in a matchup here. And this looks like just a very fun position. I, I want to see like what the opening was that brought us here. Mm -hmm. uh, E4 and then G3 move too. Okay. Because uh, Black, Black's position just looked really good right off the bat. And whoa, what a crazy, crazy game. Move 12, F5, takes queen to C6. Yeah, this looks like a fun one. Very open position. Yes. He's already sacked uh, a pawn by the looks of it. But he's going to get it back with interest uh, on E4 is, is what seems to be the case here. Yeah, yeah. He just took back the pawn right away. Mm -hmm. Um and now that he got his pawn back, he just has a better position. Right. White, White hasn't castled yet. His kings are pretty awkward. I mean, I won't discount the fact that it's not easy for black to castle here either. Mm -hmm. um, but I do prefer black's position here. So I don't think he needs to castle. Looks, looks like it's going to happen. And then the question right. is... Do you um, trade or not? Yeah, do we trade or not? Because my, my question is, just very forcefully, after knight takes e4, uh, if I play knight takes e4, I mean, I'm just hitting two things at once. I'm threatening bishop on d2 and the knight on h4, discovered attack. So uh, is that winning a piece? There's all sorts of things to consider, like a knight coming to f5, like a queen h5 check. g7 is hanging for rook takes g7 with queen f7 there. So there's all sorts of moves to consider here, um, but I'm just not sure if this wins a piece or if this is just way too risky and black should play queen takes e4, which... Right, uh, which you know. is clearly what white doesn't want to allow yet. It seems like white wants to keep the queens on the board. Is c2 hanging here? I mean, black can definitely take it. I'm not sure if he gets trapped or if black if white gets counterplay instead because he's opening up the e-file. I'm right. curious to, to see what you think about that move. Right. Yeah, um, bishop c2 here. Can it be played? Yes. Is it the type of move that you <laughs> want to play? Well, that's the question. That's that's another that's one. Um, yes. White Very is about to play long castle, I think. That is the next move white wants to do. Uh, so taking it really discourages that. And it means that if you ever long castle, let's say the bishop moves from c2, you're dealing with that long diagonal to b1, and the king feels very unsafe uh, over there. So in that sense, it feels nice. What's going to happen? Most likely, I would say, oh, I was going to say rook takes g7, but there's like queen h1 check there as an idea. And I think after queen f1 takes takes rook takes d2 somehow, we end up end up ahead there. Mm -hmm. We win a piece. So that's bishop c2 is definitely, definitely possible here. In fact, it's looking more and more like like just a very good move. Bishop c2, yeah. because there's no rook g7. There's also no knight f5, because the bishop's covering. So uh, this is looking really good for uh, Grandmaster Krikor here and uh, the Khan team. Right. Let's... Oh, so uh, the game between Grandmaster Arientari and FM Lopez seems uh -huh. to have gone underway. Uh, FM Lopez is almost down to a minute. It's in the end game now. If you want to check it out, uh huh. Yeah, I'm, ba for a little I'm bit bouncing with you. I'm, I'm going at. with the punches. There we go. I'm amazing, back. amazing. Rook d8 played. D6. So we got the we got b6 hanging here. Right. 
the, this is not the this is <laughs> i mean this isn't the the game that that by the way transformed very quickly so after rook takes b6 it's actually tari who's i feel like on the uh the slightly worse end of this Right. I mean, he can grab the pawn back by taking on d6. Okay, he didn't do that right away. He pushed a4, which obviously at first glance it looks like a free pawn, but in exchange, black gets a pass pawn on the c file, so it seems like he calculated some type of line here. He thinks so, he thinks that sacrifice was worth it. c4. Um, I think he's just trying to sort of complicate things because he, he needs to play off the time. Mm -hmm. Um if king d5 here, what happens after king d5? Yeah, he's played that immediately. Uh, rook c6 looks a little awkward after this. Right. So it seems like the only two options here are rook c7 and rook b6. Okay, rook c7. Right. It makes and... sense that he wants to stay there to attack the pass pawn from behind, which is the best position to defend against a pass pawn. Yeah, he's he's achieved something here though, has Tari, because after knight c3, he can just play king e5 or king e6. And mm -hmm. now he's got, you know, he's like got that pass pawn, it's defended by the knight. Um it feels like he's complicated things a little bit. Um, yeah. but objectively, if I'm speaking about the position, uh, there's nothing wrong with White's position. It's just the the time and, and of course the pressure of playing a stronger player. Yeah. Yeah, with with 30 seconds in an end game like this, it makes sense that Grandmaster Tari would want to choose a line that's a little bit more complicated, force his opponent to think a little bit more because the more... Oh, the sound is gone. The sound is gone. That's uh, very important. Yeah. We need yeah. your sound. Not mine, but y yours is actually crucial. Uh, okay. We should be back now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we're back now. I don't know what happened there. We are back Come now? Come on, like, you, you can just ask me to... Uh, to just keep you know, pipe down little, over there? You don't have to mute me, buddy. <laughs> That's fair. I should have asked for your permission, of course. Yeah, thanks, thanks. The polite Canadian way. All right. So, <laughs> back to this position here. Why don't Why don't you continue, and I'll take some some time out on the muted side. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> basically, what we're gonna do is just different segments. So I'm just gonna speak, and then I'll just be quiet, and you just speak for a while. Right. So <laughs> the way commentary usually goes when people yeah. are not yeah. talking over each other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So knight d4, uh, I don't think there's there's any any doubt that uh, Yasuo Lopez can hold this. And I don't know how it got here, but from it seems like Tari had just found a really difficult time actually finding an advantage in, in this right. game. And the time is getting closer and closer, right? Yeah. He's, he's getting lower on time here. What about some of the other games? I see Johan Solomon has actually lost that position. Remember, we were checking out that uh, easy position to play for white where... The, the backwards pawn on uh, yeah, I c6. That so that's that's a result. Um, the other game in that match, which is in time pressure, is uh, Miguel Admiral against uh, Christian Stuvik Holm. Honestly, does not look like a very interesting position. Uh, yeah, it's just it, in time pressure. <laughs> right, right. It, it looks definitely easier to draw than the current game between uh, Tari and Lopez. Right. But then again, I shouldn't speak too soon because black is up a pawn. Sure, it's a... And with knights and rooks, it is a little bit more tricky than just rook and rook, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that game is on. Uh, looking at some of the other matches as well, but the the reason we're on this one is because, of course, they're they're in time pressure. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm, I think I'm going to jump back to the Tari game. Which... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty glued to this game. Right. Um, King e4. Potentially. Oh, White is playing this endgame really well. It seems like he's able to make progress. The king is now black yeah. it, blocking Black's pass <laughs> pawn. Black in it. Oh, oh my sorry. goodness. What a blunder. Oh, oh, gosh. No, I spoke too soon. Alexandra, I mean, ah! you, you jinxed him completely. I know. It's my fault. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's playing it so well. He's playing it this so is, well. This is, 
this was he was about to win a knight. He could have played rook c5. Oh, sorry, not win a knight. He plays king h4. Okay, but he wouldn't have blundered. The, this is uh, this is really bad. Uh, the other interesting thing, by the way, is that he was so upset, so upset that he resigned. Why on earth would you resign? Play king f2. King f2 and just try to hold it? Well, I've got two and a take pawns. take the knight back. Yeah, I don't know why he resigned. Uh, You're right. It might be losing, but I mean, to me, it's absolutely insane to resign that position. He was just so upset. Yeah. You know, like he was shocked by 95. He's just like, okay, get me out of here. But I think that resignation is like almost as bad as the blunder. Uh, I, I can see why you're saying that. I've um, hung rooks before, Alexander. Was... Speaking from experience. <laughs> Wait, you've here. hung rooks before? I No, you don't <laughs> say. The Botez curse is real. Yep, blame Botez. Uh, this was not FM Lopez's fault. It was my fault. So I, I take full responsibility here. Yeah. Botez yeah. and Lopez. Can't trust them, no. <laughs> Man, okay, wow, so... Wow, that's painful. So let's let's move on as fast as possible. <laughs> as fast as possible, is that what you said? Just get me out of here. I'm yeah. going to take the Lopez way. Get on out of here. I don't yeah. want to see this anymore. Yeah, no, I think he's uh, he's going to be happy to uh, to be out of there as well. Um, yeah. So I think most of the matches are, are underway here. As I see, <laughs> um, MVL's game has just started. Um, just jumping to that, he's playing the board for in at Agrest. Yeah, uh, let me just quickly catch up with you on that game. Also catching my breath here. That's okay. It happens. Catching your breath after that game. Yeah, well. Yes, exactly. Yeah, G4 has just been played by Ina. So I'm not sure you're going to have a lot. She's not giving you a lot of time to catch your breath there. The kingside attack is in full force. Right, right. Um, you know, when I when I saw this position for the first half a second, I thought it might have been a Sicilian. It makes sense for White to be getting attacked in those types of position. The only problem is it's not, and I don't see where where White is gonna continue with her counter attack. Uh huh. So um, uh, I mean, yeah, Black's play is super easy, right? C four, B four, C three. Right. And it's just you can already sort of pry the position open, maybe even B three as well. Um, mm -hmm. G5 by by white is uh, an idea to try to pry the position open, but I think after G5, we're going to see F5. Right. Um, and, and that's a very important point you make, because black is in no way obligated to trade off pawns here. If he would, then uh, WIM Agress would get an attack, could bring her knight in, but he could just play F5 and say, nah, buddy. Uh, blocking well, the I have an issue with rook G1, because it looks like it's all for this G5 uh, move that is just black plays f5 and then what well right and uh she, she put her bishop on f5 but she i'm guessing you still can't push because you just drop the bishop unless there's some type of tactic there which I yeah think g5 see. bishop takes f5 takes on f6 i feel like mm -hmm. we're reaching a little bit with this because um i mean maybe you can try it you gotta go for like f takes g7 next with knight g5 hitting h7 um I'm a little skeptical. So let's say move like queen d7. Um, if okay. knight g5, then h6 could be played. Or maybe even like knight e5 covering, um, covering h7 with the, with the bishop. Right. I just feel like that bishop's going to plant itself on the g6 square and stop everything. Once we see that, queen f5, I mean, then then black's just consolidating. And again, you go for something like that, it better be working, otherwise you're just dead lost. Right, right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, at the, the board you're putting on right now. It, it's, a, it's a lot to calculate, but um, if anyone can, MVL, so. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> and he's playing, he's playing quickly as well. He knows b4, he, he sees his counterplay very, very easily with c3 coming. And mm -hmm. he's like, well, okay, you go calculate it, right? He's just like... <laughs> You know, you better find the win, otherwise I'm just playing C3 next. Right, right. Um, okay, so I, I guess, I mean, this is a really exciting to, game to stay on. Um, there, There is one more game that is getting pretty close in the uh, Blitz Streams and Raptors matchup. That one is the one between Grandmaster Lagarde and International Master Diaz, if we want to look at it at uh -huh. some point. Yeah. Um, I, I, I hate to say that you were kind of accurate about what was going on earlier on, at least from this position. It seems like White 
White has done some good work. Has all of the attacking chances here. I mean, White has two pass pawns, and White's king is a lot more safe, while Black is pretty out there in the open against yeah. the, against the hungry queen and knight. I don't know how I feel about that. Well, the question is whether you sort of full commit with something like queen h8, or mm -hmm. whether you keep this queen more around like d3, c3, um, try to play knight d4, because... Um, I think that the move knight d4 is going to be played next. Mm -hmm. So if g4 happens, we got knight d4. And um, obviously, the, the end games still need to be calculated because what's going to happen is the, the two connected pawns on the outside are good for hang white. Hang on, hang on. Did, did black just drop a knight? Yes. Black just dropped a knight. Okay. As I'm explaining some nice end game concepts, yes. he's out here <laughs> dropping pieces. I mean, this is ridiculous. Queen f6. Yeah. <clears throat> well, this is just completely over now. Not not even like a chance. Um, but your analysis was really nice too. I uh, think I'm gonna send him the replay so he knows how to continue the position next time. Yep. But you, you, my analysis required a knight on the board. Like it, right. yeah, it needed right. even material. Small detail. Small detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I'm, I'll have to let him know. Oh man, okay. that we've seen some some blunders. Some how do we blunder always check in on these like huge blunders so far? I, I, maybe we're rubbing off on them, and we're never gonna blunder again. They're just gonna take. By off the way, Queen E two check was completely missed, which just and wins completely the game. winning. Yeah, that yeah. that's a that's a move with three minutes. You probably just have to see. Um, yeah, but okay. I, White's obviously super comfortable here. Yeah. He's like, I don't care what I do. I'm winning. No yeah, matter yeah. what. No, Why I, are you not <laughs> resigning? disrespectful you know i can't i can't criticize a guy with an extra knight too much okay you know okay there so we well can't be too harsh on him he did just uncork queen takes uh, c6 tactic which was very nice and it looks like he's gonna get a much needed upset against uh, grandmaster lagarde young grandmaster who unfortunately is probably uh, going down in this game um, yeah. What does that mean for, let's say, compared to the rest of the match the, there? The Mosquitoes won the first match two and a half to one and a half, which is definitely wow. a, an upset for them since we were just talking about how they have their less strong players out in the field today. Yeah. No, if they if they can pull off results with that lineup, that means huge yeah. things probably going yeah. forward for the you, team. The Mosquitoes are bulking, Amon. You They're know? They're bulking, we, yes. <laughs> these, they're not so skinny as we thought. Nuh-uh. No. All right. That's okay. uh that's pretty incredible. What about this um Barcelona Raptor Blitzstream match um in terms of some of the other games because uh mm -hmm. I see one between uh Demante Cornet um okay. and Daniel F Force Forsan. Yeah. Uh, this is a okay. uh, I I'm coming there. What what's their username if you don't mind? Uh, Madam DD. Okay, thanks. I I should have guessed, you know. Madam Double Ds. Okay. Yeah. And h6 has just been played h4. So these are the type of positions that actually black is, is let's say, winning. But mm -hmm. you always have to be really, really careful about uh, about these. I I'm actually looking at, now that we've played h4, um, mm -hmm. let's say that black doesn't do anything impressive like rook c8. I like king h5 here. King h5. Right, King H5 trying to play King G6 yes. after? Yes, I'm trying to say hello and give a checkmate. H5, yeah. I don't like that move at all. Oh my goodness. No, H5 is really H5? wrong. Oh, I, I like it. reminds me of the famous game Nigel Short played with the tactic where he brings his king over from G1 to H6 and it's that's checkmate right. 7. It's one of the classic games. Yeah. Um, no, but, but this is yeah. that's a big miss because I think King H5, King G6, you take G7. I think white is either on the way to winning or... Or definitely for choice. Right. No, this this is very wrong because I'm going to take on f5, maybe take on h5. I always have like rook g5 to to cover things. So after rook takes f5, we're probably going to see rook c7 threatening bishop f8. I think it's the only idea. Mm hmm Which is why he didn't take on, on f5 there. Yeah, I mean, we have to give a little bit of credit to international master cornet here because he does only have 15 seconds so uh, you know th this is actually uh cornet's wife oh sorry. Cornet. okay thank you for that's that up. that's why the username is madam dd uh yes <laughs> yes i have the habit of assuming that they are male just because most of the time they are so thank yep. you for correcting me well we have no we have the can blitzstreams there they're exploiting the uh 
Uh, they've got a, a strong female player, and then... Oh my he... gosh, Krieger just lost. Did he just lose? What? Oh <laughs> What's going on here? I'm not cheering for anybody. Everybody I cheer for is yeah. losing. Alexandra, I muted you for a reason earlier. <laughs> I was trying to help the good players God, out. giving me the silence treatment. They're like, don't. I'll unmute you after they win. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. Understood. This has gotten really bad, though, because um, Rook takes f4 is with check. And then Rook can go to g5, for example. Like, we can just take every single pawn. Um, bishop e3, you can take on h5 with check. I mean, everything's falling. Or sorry, bishop e3, rook f3. Yeah. yeah, so this this yeah. is just completely over. Um, I think we should jump to to another uh, another game here. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, and just stop that. Stop that cheering. Alexander. I'm not cheering for anybody. Yeah, I have it's no not feelings for any player. I am the most apathetic human from now. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, MVL won the game against uh, WIM. Very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah that was attack was crashing through. Um, what do Whoa. we think about the other match, I think, that's gotten underway here? I'm pretty sure the Raptors are winning 4-0 in the first game. 4-0. So yes. I can bring up, wh which, is the, uh, which is the last game in that match? Um, well, that, I'm, I'm trying to confirm it. That's what chat said, but let me look. That's quite possible. Um, I'm, I'm on the game. Oh, yeah, that... so the, the last game is the one with uh, Daniel Ford and Esteban. Oh, that we were just looking at? Yeah. And so that just finished, lose. yeah. Right, and that just, yeah, so that's why it's 4 -0. That's okay. a 4 -0. wow. Um, I'm on the game uh, right now of Lor um mm -hmm. for the Turtles against uh, Eric Braun. Eric Braun, by the way, I actually played him in, in a tournament, and he, he removed my chances of a Grandmaster Norm. I played him, like, late in the tournament, so I have a really, really disturbing memories of Eric Braun. You do, you do. Um, so if you want, I'm gonna cheer for him, and then we know what's gonna happen. <laughs> right, right. I can put the curse on you. Just tell me what to do. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you 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 say that, and he uncorks bishop takes e3. So I think he's winning now. Thanks for that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't work. Well, yeah. it's because I was secretly yeah. I, I can't control the powers. Okay. Right. Bishop e3. Yeah. Uh, uh, for those that that are just joining here, rook is hitting the queen. Bishop's hitting the rook on c1. Queen is threatening mm -hmm. to go to f2 and deliver. Well, probably not exactly checkmate, but you know, just removing all the cover there. So, right. in order for us to, to keep anything here, I think we got to play rook c8 check, followed by like queen e2, just to try to keep mate our, our material safe. Okay. Rook c8, king g7, queen e2. Um, but no, this this shouldn't be this shouldn't, shouldn't be working. Shouldn't be holdable. No. Yeah. So I might take the rook takes d7, bishop d7. And let's say just bishop back to c5 or something. And next move e3, next move maybe rook d5 and, and get the pieces in. But um, I, it looks like once again, we joined the position right when it you know turned bad for one player. Right. But that's okay because that's when it gets the most interesting. Um, at least from a tactical perspective. We get to see how black finishes this off. Right. Which... Which is actually still very instructive because obviously black is better here, but um, opposite Grandma bishops, Ron right? Has, yeah, opposite bishops, and he has to play very precise here and, and finish it off. Yep, yep. This is the match uh, the Berlin Bears against the Lublana Turtles, and yeah. there are some other ones that are getting a little bit low on time in uh, that match. Um, one of the other ones that I just brought up was Marco Baldolf. Um, okay against uh username would be gm splinter on that one all right uh against dusko pavasovich perfect got it open as well and th these are the type of positions where uh you know both kings are are in trouble <laughs> right. both kings are in trouble white has this like long-term problem of back rank mm -hmm. checkmate and it's you just can't get rid of it. It's always going to be there until maybe like really really deep into the end game. And yeah. meanwhile, the black king, look at this last move, queen h4, right? I have to stop queen f6 check. I have to stop queen h7 mate. Yeah. Uh, queen e5 is stopped by the rook. So it's just everything is hanging by a thread. Right. And I, I guess the way I would think about these different king end games is black is slightly worse in the short term, but if he's able to get out of out of the attack, then white is in a much more awkward position defending against those back rank mates you 
talk yeah. about. No, and the we've got this protected pass pawn on d5, and mm -hmm. just any endgame without the queens, where black's not getting mated, like you said, um, mm -hmm. black can just sort of double rooks, always threaten rook e1. Really tough to play. Right. So I guess what white is trying to do is be really annoying on the long a1 to h8 diagonal. Right. Clearly black is using his queen and his rook to protect against e5 and f6, but maybe white can try something interesting and, you know, get his queen to d4 at some point. Yeah, I, I like that. For example, if black tries to play like, I don't know, queen g6, try to trade off the queens, there's always queen mm -hmm. f4 heading to d4, like you said. Right. Um, rook d6, queen g7. Again, if, if queen g6 here, queen f4. I like queen f4 now. Yeah, queen f4 and trying to play queen, queen d4. Because I'm also hitting that G-pawn. And if white takes on G3, suddenly everything we're talking about in terms of white's king safety is out the window and white's probably just winning. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I don't think black is going to let white take on G3, but that would be a dream to have as uh -huh. white. Mm -hmm. Rook to D8. So again, if white plays something like Rook B7 to keep the rook on the 7th, black's going to play D4. Right. Uh, Which is why I thought pawn. white should have played queen D4 right away. But yeah. this is also an interesting idea because if black trades off the rooks, then all of a sudden white has a pass pawn as well. Yeah, this, this looks like an annoying move because if you take, pawn takes, and then if the, you ever try like rook d8, you have to put up with queen e5 check. Queen e5, king g8, and let's say rook, I don't know, maybe maybe rook e1, just get the, get the pieces in. He goes oh, for it straight it, away. So this is similar to what uh, Baldolf is playing, actually, except that he continued with rook e1 first. Let's be careful of queen takes d6. Yeah. Oh, actually, queen yeah, d6, queen maybe takes you d6. can do that. Right. Rook e8, take it, queen d6, back rank mate, don't forget. Yeah, That's okay. That's what we were saying. I think he may have just blundered that pawn. I think that he was confident in the rook e8 move here, which mm -hmm. actually does not work. Right. So he's going to go queen d4, king g8, maybe queen g4. No, rook e5. Okay. Maybe pawn h6. Don't know yeah. if that's a move we want to be playing or not. I mean, it, it definitely makes the king even a little bit more weak, but I like stopping g5, which queen g6 also does and threatens queen b1. That's that, right. You're right. That back rank is so annoying. I yeah. mean, aren't they always when you're forced in these kinds of positions? But... Yeah, but it's it's always in the back of uh, the back of your mind here. Yeah. Uh, confession chat, if you have ever fallen for a back rank mate, this should be every single one of you at some point in your life. You know, time to confess. My hand's up. Yep. Yeah, good. It's like in Mean Girls when you've been personally victimized by <laughs> Regina George. Yeah. Basically everyone. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Rook um, G5, so Rook E1. Do, do you think White has any drawing chances here? Because that's what White should be hoping for at this point. Uh, definitely drawing chances, just because I think they're always in the, so we'll, we'll see rookie one, takes, takes, and the queen end games always present drawing chances, but if I had to actually evaluate this, uh, I gotta say that black should just be winning based on the fact that there's all these back rank issues, and there's two connected pass pawns. Right. And white can't even grab pawns as easily as you normally can in queen end games, because he has to be careful for the back rank. Yep. In this case, he can, because it's a check, but... Um, That's the only way you can. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but black just wants to escape the checks. Um, queen c2 played. It would it's be impressive to see, tricky, to see white but... getting out of this. Yeah. But this is the uh, match between the turtles and the bears. I think this is the last game that's still going in that first round for them. Um, mm -hmm. We see the, like you mentioned, the mosquitoes out to lead against the gnomes. A 4-0. Uh, which I personally haven't seen. Have you seen a 4-0 yet? Uh, I haven't. I haven't been paying attention to all the matches. I mean, I know the Barcelona Raptors were killing the Central Division section, but this right. is impressive. Yeah. No, this is this yeah. is quite something. So it's I don't know about this it. end game here because it should be it should be winning, like right. just right. very easily winning for for Black. Yeah. Um, I get that you're evaluating it because mostly because of the pass pawn. So black is going to keep white's king tied to it. White can't wander too far. Otherwise, black is going to be able to promote. And at some point, black is going to go for the... the Just A4 don't play pawn. d4. He, yeah, don't play d4. But black does have to be careful because um, 
I think all you need to do in this endgame is bring your king over to c5 and then play d4. Right. Um, does, does white have to be careful about uh, something like f4, g takes f4, and then marching the h-pawn forward and white's king being close enough to stop f3? Definitely, definitely. Um, the Probably the more crucial thing is if you play like king d6, I can play f4 and I can just even take f4 with my king and then bring my king back to stop the d-pawn and suddenly I'm the one with the outside protected pass pawn. Right, right. So, so. Uh, if I play, well, I feel like I've got to stop that actually. Mm -hmm. If I play king back to f5 or king to e5, it looks like white can almost just repeat like king e5, king d3. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not so easy actually to bring my king over to c5 because like you said, white's going to play f4. And it's not about sacrificing, it's that I can even take that pawn back and suddenly white's yeah. like winning that endgame. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, king uh, d3. So a little more tricky for, for black to win than we thought, but definitely black is the one pushing for the win here. Yeah, but I don't, I don't actually see how we deal with that. I don't see how we deal with that threat. d4 gets outflanked by king c4, and again, white has yeah. like many ways to just win this position. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how black is going to progress because... Right. Yeah, normally in this positions you'd go for the a4 okay, pawn. Okay, he's but going for it. So now oh, oh, there's no f4, yeah. right? Because I think we just promote our d pawn in that case. Yeah, I think he just tricked white here. Takes, and you just bring the king over to the king side now. No, or f3, 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 instantly winning. Okay. Even better. Uh, did, that, so, that was did really. White mess mess something up, or did black just have perfect technique? I'm. I have a feeling that white messed something up. That's that's yeah. a win there, but um, I have a feeling that there's. That probably shouldn't have yeah. uh, have happened. And again, like that. looking at the time with uh, seven seconds left, it is quite likely that that's what happened here. Right. Um, Moto Boys is asking who we're who we're cheering for. Like I said, I'm no longer cheering for anyone because yeah. every time I cheer, it goes wrong. So I don't know about Amon. Uh, maybe you're still cheering for someone. I won't make that decision for you. Well, you've scared me off the idea. <laughs> that, it's not safe anymore. Yeah. All right. It's not safe. It ain't safe. It ain't safe. It ain't, okay. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Hi, kid. Um, so, what about the match that I don't think we've touched on yet, which is the Baden Baden Snowballs? Um, mm -hmm. Again, that's such a fun name to say. I want to look at their games. Baden Baden, or or Baden -Baden. you like snowballs? Uh, I'll let you guess which of those sounds more fun. Baden Baden. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Um, Let's open up some of their games. We should definitely take a look before the game is over. Yeah, I just pulled up the game of Georg Meyer, who looks to be... Uh, you always feel like black is pushing these positions um, because you can stick your rook on a2 and mm -hmm. just be behind that, that outside pass pawn. Um, and you've sort of doomed the knight on h3 to, to being a little passive for the moment. Um, maybe you play like king f5, f6, and e5, and build a little hut for your king. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's no checks. But probably the objective evaluation is not not that bad for, for white. But I just find it so annoying to play these positions where you can sit your rook on a2, and actually white is the one with a, with a passive rook despite the outside pass pawn. Right. Um, and, and that's a really good point because normally I would see the pass pawn and think it's better for white, but that's also in the position where white has a pawn on e3 and it's just an extra one. Right, an extra one? Yeah, yeah I'll an be extra on, one is nice. Yeah, I'm on board with that. Okay. Um, F6, e5, the rook will probably go to a2. Um, and he's he's going to try to put white in a position where, like, the knight on h3, by the way, after e5, just has no forward squares to go to, and it can't really move because right. f2 is hanging. Yeah, maybe white should have played knight f4 instead of rook a8 to just make sure that it gets yeah, but somewhere, F2 but then you falls. lose f2, yeah. He, yeah. He's, he's in this really passive position, so uh, what looks uncomfortable to me is probably this knight can go corral that, that pawn there, like, let's say, I don't know, king f3, knight c4, a6, and you sort of bounce your knight around, and you just keep attacking that pawn until it goes to a7, and then, mm -hmm. and then you try to move out of the way. Um, so like yeah. a6, knight b6. Rook a7, knight d5, and you know rook a8, knight c7 already picks up the pawn as an example. 
Yeah, it seems like it's winning for Black, and Black's pieces are very well coordinated here. His knight, his rook, his king can come in later if he needs to. Yeah. No weaknesses with the pawns. That's uh, right. White doesn't even have any checks to try and do something sneaky with. Right. No, this this looks like any of the times getting lower, so uh, for the for this matchup, it looks good. I see that uh, there's been a draw, I think, between Dimitri Colors and uh, Back Row. Mm -hmm. um, and the only, I think the other game in that match still going is... Yeah, with uh, Grandmaster Alexenko and FM Delorme. But it yes. looks like uh, White is just totally winning. But, here, actually. but that's actually an, a big upset, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just recall because I actually commentated this exact division with Robert last week. And um, what you have to remember is that Alexenko lost, I think, his first two games. And he was oh, even man. upset by some of the lower-rated players. And then he won his next two against some grandmasters. So he's just been a totally volatile player in the league so far. Yeah, he's he's been uh, performing sub-2500 so far, actually. But yeah. it seems like he's very good at playing against grandmasters, but not so good against lower-rated players, which uh, makes sense for a, a player who is used to playing tougher opposition. Although... Actually, no, I shouldn't really make excuses. That's not good. <laughs> no, it's, I was, it's I was not trying good. to find something there, but then I was like, I don't buy it myself. Yeah. So. What am I saying right now? <laughs> yeah. No, oh, but this this is, this is just clean up though. That there's not even like a hope or anything. King H six, H five. So this um, looks like it'll be a win for um, Marseille, and that means if this is a win, and we're calling the other one. Maybe a win for Georg Meyer. It mm -hmm. looks like maybe two and a half, one and a half uh, first round for Marseille. So nothing, right. nothing I mean, that you can't come back from. It looks like it's already from. one and a half. So if they win this this game, which they will, they definitely won the match. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, won the round. Let's be clear. Sorry. Yeah, won the <laughs> round. Thanks. Thanks. Um, um, so yeah, this this one's over, and that other one is probably going to wrap up. Um, but we can take take a look. We can maybe jump back to uh, the Norway match, which is. Um, those games are pretty deep into it in the second round there. Mm -hmm. Which one um, is catching well, your eye? Well, I just looked at Grandmaster Hansen and International Masters Admiral's game because it looks like White is about to win. Um, his rook is on H7 and on G6. So right. if this is not screaming mate, I don't know what is. Or yeah, at this, least this is, grabbing all the pawns. Exactly, yeah. And this is quite the upset again. I, these, I told you, the mosquitoes are bulking. I'm just going to say that. you know, They're mutant mosquitoes here. They're playing very well compared to what we expected. Right. The only thing that I'll point out, just in terms of uh, an upset, is that uh, White's higher rated, first of all. And right. I the, saw GM and I am. And, yeah, uh, exactly. But also... Uh, Torborn Ringdahl Hansen is also the board four. So it. it's it, it's probably not considered an upset in that sense, but it's still uh it's still probably like very important result for, for them. Right. Um, yeah, they're, they're good point. Um it's not an upset, but I guess they are evenly matched enough that this wasn't an easy game for no, not either at all. side. No, no. When you have a grandmaster, I mean there there's some things that just you can't see in rating. I mean the grandmaster title means it's not an easy point no matter what. Right, and and you're not just saying this because you got your grandmaster title. Right? No, I mean, it's no, just, no, no, no. That's just a well-known uh, thing, uh, you know, about yeah. grandmasters. You know. Yeah, they they give it in the grandmaster handbook, right? Yeah, well, I can't tell you too much about that. Uh, you know, it's they they tell us not to not to mention that. Right. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, this looks good for the mosquitoes, like you said. Um, this should be this should be a conversion. Um, the other games that are ongoing. One of them is, it looks like just a crushing position for Johan Solomon, mm -hmm. uh, who lost in the first round. So this is a nice bounce back game for him. He's in a rook end game. He's up a very, very clean pawn. And uh, you know he's even got the open file, the seventh rank. It just got everything here. Right. This He, he must be feeling pretty good after this one. Um, and how, well, well uh, FM Lopez also blundered his rook in the first game, right? So I'm right. sure he's feeling pretty bad after that game. And it, it is a, a little hard to try not to get tilted after a year. You have such a crushing first game and give it away. Right. Well, uh, people will remember maybe last year's Pro League um, where uh, Eric hung a rook 
Eric Hansen,、mm-hmm. and then I proceeded to hang a rook right after. So well, you wanted to give t- moral support, to say you're、right. not the only one, right? So、yeah. it's that、uh, the tilt can can affect your own games as well as others, as well as others. It depends if you know his teammates are playing in the the same location or not. Yeah. But this looks very good for、uh, yeah a three b four, and he can just sit here, and this is basically like、um, this is like a probably one of those mismatch fights. Where you got a really skinny person against、uh, somebody in the heavyweight division, and he's just、mm-hmm. sitting—he's just sitting on you. He's not capable of necessarily out wrestling you, but he's、the、just slow kill. Yeah, he's just putting his body weight on you. And there it is. This is going to be captured, I think, immediately. This should be a winning king and、yeah. pawn end game. We're、um, going to see a tap out sooner. His his face is going to turn blue here, and the referee is coming in. So, I think, for example, after takes takes,、um, White can even.、Uh, Probably waste some moves and achieve a position even after like takes takes e five king e six king e four. You even、mm-hmm. have ideas like f four f five check and then king f four and you'll you'll end up taking on f five again. So there's lots of ways、right. to win a king and pawn in game up an entire pawn. I、uh, don't、yeah. expect him to think too long about this capture. This looks like a point for the gnomes.、Um, the other position that we looked at was a point for the mosquitoes. We were thinking. Um, in the last game, and what about some of the other ones that、uh, that are ongoing? What about Ariantari? How's he doing? Yeah, let's let's check back on him.、Um, so he's playing against international master Liam. Right. Vroik. You、yep. you you've lived in in、uh, Holland. You can pronounce his name right.、Uh, usually, when I see L I J K, it's like like okay.、Um, but I'm inclined to say Liam Vroik, but Liam Vroik sounds. Like maybe that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. Got it. Okay, thank you. Um, um, so what case, seems to be going on here? White's White is heavily defending his d3 pawn. Another awkward backwards pawn.、Um, Black has a pass pawn on a5 that might become handy later on. At the same time, e5 is also going to become a threat at some point. So、right. there's a lot of different、uh, weaknesses going on for both sides, making it pretty uneven in the. Position I, is in, equal material. I'm inclined to to. Oh, I'm at least looking at the move rook c5,、um, mm-hmm. because the bishop's tied to the e pawn. I'm sort of curious what he's going to do after rook c5. I have the idea to maybe play the move b6, and、right. deflect your bishop from one of the two pawns that I'm now attacking, whether a5 or e5.、Um, so rook c5 looks like a move I would consider because if you kick me with b6,、mm-hmm. you give me that nice rook c6、five. square, and again rook c5 prevents. This move that we see on the board, Bishop B6. This move looks like a well well placed bishop, and I'm not sure. So, so you prefer white here? Well, let's say. Oh well, not anymore. Let's say I maybe did prefer white because now we see Bishop on B6 controlling with the pawn on B7 all the C file squares. We might see Rook F7 or Rook F8 right now, or maybe both.、Mm-hmm. And Rook comes into F2 as an idea.、Um, it's just that if I play Rook F7 right now, you can't play Rook F1. I can take、right. and take on d3. Right. So you have to play this move, and you no, know, this is shifting.、Uh, I think in Black's favor, especially with that outside a pawn that you always have to consider.、Um, black, Black is probably、uh, preferred here. Yeah, it definitely seems like the game changer was letting Black activate his bishop here. Now White is just completely on the defense, and he can't even consider the moves you were showing a little earlier. Right.、Um, I think White wants to get counterplay with like rook a1, try to take on a5. Uh, mm-hmm. Another idea for Black in positions like this is a move like G5, trying to play G4 and, and get a, a foothold for Rook F3.、Um, mm-hmm. But he's yeah, just yeah doubling.、So、do you think White is ever going to be able to get rid of that annoying D3 pawn with a D4 push? Obviously, the bishop is there protecting it right now. Yeah.、Um, um, Long term, that's the goal. Like you, you, you feel、yeah. like you want to expand, but even achieving a move like D4, let's not forget. If I take it, we exchange bishops. Again, the resulting pawn structure is probably in Black's favor as well.、Um, yeah, I, I agree. I guess potentially, even though it would be against,、uh, it'd be in Black's favor. Playing in a rook endgame might be a little bit、yeah. easier than trying to hold down such a cramped position. But you're just, you know, picking、uh, the lesser of two evils here. Right, right. So if I want to,、um, I can always play a move like maybe King to D7 and just sort of keep. White's rooks completely out of the position.、Um, King d7 with that bishop, and he's played it. So it just watches all the squares on the c file. And、mm-hmm. White's played the move g4, 
trying to give that bishop a diagonal like bishop on g3 where it covers yeah. f2 but it also does something proactive and hits the pawn on e5 right right he doesn't want black to be the only one with a bishop that's doing something i, I like the idea of bishop g3 actually um it's very instructive on how you can improve your position here you notice that one of white's worst pieces was his bishop on e1 right you think about where is the only square i can move it that would be slightly better position and that's how you come up with a plan with g4 and bishop g3 right so here uh if i play rook e3 check which looks like you know the move uh king yeah. d2 rook eight to f3 and i'm maybe hitting the, the d pawn there i'm gonna right. have to play a move like rook c3 and I'm just wondering if these rooks are actually doing something or if they're just simply very clumsy, uh, the, the black on rooks. On e3 and on f3? Yeah, because they're kind of boxed in there a little bit. You're right, because how are you going to move the rook on the f file? I guess your bishop's protecting it, but you might just have to reroute your rooks anyway in that position because white can keep defending the d3 pawn, and it's really hard to make progress since it's, it's a light-squared pawn and you have a dark-squared bishop. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, so... And also, e5 is looking... Like a snack, but looking like a snack, not, uh, <laughs> probably not one white's gonna get. You you don't think? Uh, I I don't think so. It's just it's easy to defend with a king, right? And yeah, not, bishop d4 have to worry as about well. checks. Yeah, bishop d4, king up. So this um this game uh still very unclear. I think the only um looking at some of the other games that are getting a little bit lower on time and some of the oh. other. Other matchups. How about Grandmaster David Klein and International Master Holm, just since we're, we're yep, finishing they're up pretty the low on time game. as well. Yeah. I like to see players under two minutes, you know, making people sweat a little bit. I like to see that when I'm not the player under two minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's preferred. Right. Um, okay, is... so obviously looks better for black because of the H-pawn. I can um, tell you when I see pawns like the, the ones on the queen side for black, I, I think of Berlin. And this was a Berlin um, mm -hmm. Opposite bishops, but with the rooks on the board, I think there's still quite a lot to play for for uh, black here because f4 is weak. You got that really really scary h pawn because the bishop mm -hmm. covers h1. So actually, yeah, that pawn is is so scary. Once you play h3, you're threatening like rook takes c3. Uh, lots lots of ways to just convert that h pawn up the board. So I think yeah. this is really close to winning for for black. Yeah. Um... Okay, yeah, I have to check the rating again because I, I looked first, Grandmaster Klein against an international master, <laughs> but they're actually very close in rating once again, as you pointed out earlier, so good points. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, you know, low-rated people that are capable of scoring big points, especially in the pro league. You often like find out these random people that are beasts and they're kind of discovered from their pro league performances, especially right. on board four. Yeah. Okay, so this match, um, very, very neck and neck, actually. Uh, right now, it's completely tied. What do we think about the um, Barcelona Raptors? They're up 4-0. Like, they, they could do another 4-0, for example. How are these matches looking? Well, now I'm excited to see if they even have a chance for another 4-0. Well, let's, <laughs> let's take a look. Um, you know how to create the hype. You're even getting me hyped up, and I also <laughs> get commentary. You're like, let's go. Okay. Um, I'm on the game of Maxime Lagarde against yep, Miguel Munoz. Uh, okay. So Black, obviously, is, is the one with a scarier attack here. Yeah. White's collected all of his pieces on uh, his back rank here. So yeah. an interesting uh, defensive system he's going for. Yeah, because there's a... It's, it's again, um, bishop to f5, knight to c4, um, mm -hmm. just all these attacking prospects. I don't see, like, forced anything, but the prospects are there. Uh, queen a2, yeah. also extremely scary, with uh, queen a1 check threatened, and if king c2, bishop b3, and I pick up the b2 pawn and just chase right. the king everywhere. Right. Um I mean, so 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 obviously Barcelona Raptors are favored here. That's they look one really good point here. out of out of four. No, this looks bad. I like the move h five here. I think that's H5. really scary for H, Bishop h six, right? For away. Bishop okay. h six, that looks really yeah. really tough to deal with um, because it's just what? the Bishop on d six for White is just not really participating. Are, so. are you afraid at all about Queen takes c five? Um, I'm I'm a one track mind. I I only see forward. <laughs> I'm like one of those okay. one of those horses. And I've just got that cone around my head. Yeah. So uh, of course I'm. Don't don't let those checks scare you. I mean, you also have the blinders, so you don't 
see much to your periphery. You would have probably didn't even think C5 was scary. Yep. And I, well, I didn't right. even see it was hanging, but thankfully I have knight C6, so I'm not just getting embarrassingly checkmated. And yeah. I have to say, bishop H6 is very tough to stop in that position, followed by right. queen A2 mate, or but right. bishop B3 coming. And looks very good. Um, yeah, so H5. I, I, I can't say there's that no, there's it's no like... way for black to, to block. I guess he can try to give up a rook with rook D2. Right. It's yeah, it's not looking good. But that's just an idea, of course. Like he doesn't have to give up that pawn. Maybe he can take time and protect yeah. that. But maybe he doesn't have time. And H5 played. I'm channeling my buddy Miguel Munoz. Uh, okay, just what? So he took on c5. Isn't there also like queen a7, queen b8, queen c7? Oh, but you can't go to e7 because of the knights. So those. Where are oh. you getting queen a7 from? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Where are these moves coming from? Me and Miguel are not impressed. <laughs> Did I say queen a7? I meant any other move. I just, you know, sometimes you make a typo and you're like, the. The W was next to the E. That's, that's yeah what I a did. typo yeah. with your voice. Yep. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Knight so, C two, and again, this just looks like a very very fun attacking position here. I know that uh, Black is thinking about ideas like rook takes on uh, D six. Mm -hmm. Just it's the type of move that that you're considering. Um, also, Bishop can come to F five. It seems like though White wants to play Knight E three. And on bishop f5, he's playing bishop d3. And somehow, this is being held together, is what I'm led to believe. Bishop h6 check, let's say, knight e3. And if bishop f5, bishop d3. And somehow, uh, <laughs> we're running out of ammunition here for the fire. <laughs> That's... That's a really nice way to defend, it seems like. I mean, the, these moves would be hard to find, except it seems like they're the only moves. Oh, yeah, those are my favorite. Here, when, so. when I don't have to calculate because I just have to do it. Yeah, it's like, well, it might not be good, but there's nothing else. So right, exactly. <laughs> let's go for it. Yeah, no, th this looks like maybe we actually see um, Maxime Lagarde sort of escape here. That's what it's just, looking like. Yeah, um, Fugini getting out of this very challenging trap. I'm also looking at the game between Paul Velton and D. Forsen again. Mm -hmm. And this one looks like same color bishops. And white has this A pawn. The thing is, uh, as white, you never actually have to be concerned about losing a position like this because even if you lose that A pawn, even if like the black king ends up on F4 in some bishop endgame it could be so bad but all you do is play king h2 and put your bishop anywhere on the board and you just simply can't lose like right there's just no there's just no way so he's white's the only one playing for the win here it looks pretty drawish uh, i would mm -hmm. say but um again barcelona raptors the only ones playing for playing for a win here yeah and i well now black just played queen before so obviously the first move white looks at here is Queen e2 attacking the bishop and the king because then bishop yep. d5 is coming and yep. white can't get checked. And if you trade off all of those pieces and you have a pass pawn on the a file, black's king is going to have to run to stop the pawn while white's king goes over to gobble up the pawns on the king's side. So, so after bishop e6, be bishop d5, uh, does he have any checks? Because I'm not seeing them. Queen b1, just king g2. And mm -hmm. I don't know why this isn't just completely winning. By the way, this queen e2 move, it never won the bishop, but it was sort of in the air for the last couple of moves. And I'm just so surprised, uh, you know, as a black player, how do you not, you know, see that that c coming there, right? Because yeah, yeah. I would just move my bishop back out of instinct, you know, safeguard. Right. It seems like we're, we're this is lost. Uh, having quite a few blunders in the games today. No, so. this is, Alexander, this is over, actually. Just like you said, black's going to have to chase that a-pawn down with the king. And mm -hmm. White's just going to march into the king's side. And, I mean, you can resign here with the clear yeah, conscience. Yeah. I mean, th th that's why I'm thinking that his move was could be counted as a blunder earlier on. That's another on. win for the Raptors. That's crazy. They, they keep winning. Oh, well, that's what we like to see. 
right. I guess either the underdogs who are coming back or the team that's just rolling through demolishing. I, I guess you. I like the, the fights. Well, this one's over. I'd like to jump to Krikor's game because I see he has nine seconds like in the middle of a middle game here. Yeah, okay. You said Krikor and my energy levels went up. That's just <laughs> because his chat is so energized. Let's see his game. Let's see his game. Let's Rook G1 game. was played. Now, it, his position is reasonable, but... He is down pawns here, if I if I had to guess. He's down two, I think. Yep. Down two pawns. Uh, oh. Rook A3 played. He's got 10 seconds. This is not looking good. No, he's not looking good. And again, this is like... Uh, this one is definitely an upset, by the way. I don't know what board Alejandro uh, Alvarado Diaz is on, but... Um, I'm just going to say that my prediction at the, at the start of it was that... Alejandro Diaz is going to keep upsetting higher rated opponents. Sure, his performance has been 2,700, so it's an easy prediction to make, but that's what he is doing again. He's their board four, but he's he's playing super well. Right. Yeah. And Rook H8 is coming, and it's going to lead to a checkmate. Like, yeah, if that Rook stayed on G1 and you played King H2, it would be Rook H8, Rook H3, Knight H6, checkmate. So um, you really got to be careful about this position. He's made the G1 square available. Oof, at least he got a pawn, though, Krikor, right? He took on A6, and, you know, he's trying to clean up all those queenside pawns. So I have to say his his time scrambling has been, uh, has been pretty nice here. And, yes, keeping those rooks on the board, this is very, very scary. This is very Ooh. scary. You don't want to get mated here. I love the move knight E6, because otherwise, simply rook H7, rook H8, and, you know, checkmate on H1. So yeah, he has to take that knight off of the f4 square. It's a very scary piece because yeah. now that the knight is not going to be there, he has king f1 and king e2, so he's less scared. It, it seems like, he, wow, Krieger is incredible at creating here. counterplay here. Yeah, yeah. Under time pressure, I think he's playing very well, and I mm -hmm. think that his opponent is actually, he's doing that thing where you, you almost play quickly because your opponent's in time pressure, but then you realize at that point you're both just blitzing or playing bullet, like, you're yeah, not exactly. using your time advantage. It reminds me of in video games when you, you start shooting the, the final boss, but he just gets stronger with the more bullets. Yes. That's that's what Krieger is doing here. Yeah, and right, at the, right when you're about to take the health bar down, he has like one final big attack. Right, right. And that's I think that's what we're seeing right now. Exactly. So uh, final level, let's see if uh, IMDS can pull this off. Yeah, king going to g6 always results in knight e7 check. Uh, C7's right. hanging right now, and if you play like Rook C8, Knight E7 kicks your Rook off, and I can go grab that pawn. So, I'm not sure that... Uh... So, maybe Black actually has to start being defensive here. Right. Um... Now, this is uh, Krikor playing extremely well, and he, I mean, at this point, the, don't the Blitzstreams just need a point on the board? Can, can someone just get a point for their team? <laughs> Aww. Can I mean, someone yeah, just get a draw? I, can we just see a draw? It's 5-0. Come on, Blizzard. Yeah, they, I mean, they need it for the morale. You know? Yes, exactly. As soon as they see that number change from a zero, I mean, this is like when you're, you're, you're courtside or something and you know, you're know you you're at the dunk competition. You've got the zero to ten numbers, but they only needed to bring the zero, it looks like, uh, today. They didn't need the other numbers. And uh, I think right, you got to right. change that. you got to boost the morale, and I think it's going to be a high-energy creek or low time comeback that that could do it for them all right well i i think that there is definitely a chance for that um i maybe black is going to try to defend rook c8 and once that happens creek is coming in also diaz is also getting very close to time pressure so. yeah no he's made it very tricky here also the game we were just looking at uh white won so okay. that is a point for the can blitz streams maybe this is the round where they crawl their way back in because I think they're going to get a point from that and mm -hmm. Krikor uh, here is is in tough um, right what right. is the other one is it Madam DD uh, uh, yeah, against Madam uh, DD Hippolito against... mm -hmm. and she the, again two extra pawns for white plus the bishop pair unfortunately it yeah. doesn't get much better than that <laughs> right uh, yeah, this, yeah if this you know you had to weird. describe your, your dream end game this would be one of them yeah this would literally be it Bishop yeah. c5 here, maybe just just dominate that knight, make sure it can't move. 
Right, exactly. It, with the bishop pair, it's just so easy to yeah. take away all the pieces from the knights. Bishops move much faster. The knights are cramped. And also, there's past pawns. There's yeah. past pawns. The, the, this is definitely going to be a win, it looks like, for the Raptors. And then I think that would make the round 2-2. Two, two. Um, so probably looking at some sort of 6-2 uh, to two score line. Yeah, that's, that's a win for the Barcelona Raptors there. Um, and uh, let's jump back to that Krikor game just for the moment. As, yeah, let's uh, see what's it's happening. It's really in time pressure, and Krikor has made some, some strides in the position. Oh, but he also has less than five seconds. King f2, rook check, king up. There are some checkmate ideas here. Rook f2 and f5 check. Oh my gosh. Getting real scary here. The knight's hanging, let's not forget, on e8. Right. Um, if I was in, in time, well, actually, Alejandro's not in that much time pressure, so. But n simple moves when you're in time pressure like this, like come back, protect the knight, seem to, yeah. to make sense, but he's probably scouting for a checkmate here. Yeah, it looks like he, he hasn't given up on the idea, but um, maybe an annoying move here is rook to e3. Oh, nice. Taking away white's king's escape square. And then I'm looking at rook g8 check. I don't know if I would have played it first. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's going to take on a2. It's definitely very good for him, but uh, Krikor is trying to get that rook down to d8, and he's going all in. He's giving like all his pawns up, but I just, unfortunately, I don't see it working because after rook d8, you're just threatening nothing. Right. Um... Wow, this this game has been very hectic. But there were, we're about to get in time pressure, and Krikor has a lot of experience here. So right. th this is that's the only way that I see him pulling this one out, is right. somehow using the time pressure. Rook is threatening to go to h8, yeah. maybe. He is a good bullet player. Um, I haven't seen uh, International Master Alejandro Diaz's games yet in time pressure, so let, let's see. But it also seems like... His position is way easier to play, so right. the only thing he has to be careful about is his hanging knight on e8 and the e7 pawn. B2, there you go, but just queen. It's over. This is over. Yeah. By the That's time you take that knight on e8, move. there's just a queen arriving on the board with check, and this is uh, wow. This is going to be over as soon as he, you know, gets those rook checks in. It's just checkmate. Oh man, we I've seen a lot of strong board fours this season. Um, International Master Alejandro Diaz, as well as, as well as FM Christopher Yu. Yeah. But I'm not sure who wow. the MVP is here. That was incredible. The, a queen and two rooks. It's not hard to find a checkmate with those species. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that's the, the Raptors look like they're firmly in control of this match um, because I've, this this one flipped. Krikor was not able to secure that point. So it's actually 7-1, to one, Alexandra. Have you ever seen such a gap between the scores this early no, on? No, I, I can say no, especially if I think about who's actually playing in the match for the blitz streams. Yeah. They're no slouch. Right. Like, they've got a good roster. Yeah. So th this is incredible. Uh, Barcelona and, and you've been is one to criticize the roster, so I, you're not holding back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, this is... Uh, that's looking very good. Let's keep going with some of the, um, the matches that still have their round ongoing. Wow. And shout out to Chesbe in the chat. Hi, good to see you here. Hello, Chesbe. Uh, Chesbe has been putting in so much work for all the chess streams. So, chat, make sure to give her a quick thank you as give well as love. the other mods. Give some love. Yeah, yeah the, mo the mods deserve the occasional back pat here and the, there. Uh, more than occasional, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tough love. Tough love. But they, they take care of the chat, uh, yeah. which, is, which is great. And what about... The, I just saw a draw happen in the, I think it was the Turtles match. So okay. what else is ongoing there? We have Laura Yunick is playing Michael Bezold. That's right. um, Medalja. Okay, just opening up the games once again. This one looks like it should be pretty easily converted. Time advantage, pawn advantage, position advantage. I mean, that everything is, is going well here for right. uh, the Berlin Bears. Yep, and uh, okay, so let's let's see maybe another game then. Yep, the, um, these matches are a lot closer, I can say. Um, mm -hmm. the, the bottom two here between the Turtles and, and the Snowballs match as well. The, right. The scores between them are, are much closer. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Um, 
I mean, it's not hard to be closer when it's 7-1. Yeah, when but... you got 7-1 <laughs> right above you. Yeah, uh, but good point. Um, so I'm trying to find... Ah, yes. The Let's look quickly at the game between Dusko Pavasovic and mm-hmm. Steve Berger. My okay. favorite account name, Dr. Burger Burger. Dr. Burger Burger? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good one. It's kind of okay. like Baden Baden. Oh, and this is a really interesting end game here. Yeah. Um, You've got I mean, the wrong pawn. The, the wrong yeah. H pawn. That's uh, important. Right, because um, if if there was just the pawn on H six, the bishop on H two, if White was able to get his king onto H one, it would be a draw since Black cannot get his kick his king out because he has the wrong colored bishop. So what what do you think about a move like uh, Bishop F four here? Because I'm saying that even if you get my F seven pawn, the point is you can't catch my H pawn. Right. Um, yeah, so play bishop f4, and then black's king is able to stop the two passers, right. and white's king is just tied. Yeah, that, that looks like a pretty straightforward idea. Um, what white is going to have to do in that situation is keep his king close enough to where it would catch the h-pawn if it just starts. Uh huh. Because after bishop f4, um, it's tough to find a move. Uh, if I play c6 or d7 those pawns are just falling um yeah. if i play king f5 i don't know if i'd move those pawns <laughs> yeah exactly if i play king f5 you got to move the bishop again but i think that's the repetition he's going for he wants the bishop to leave the h2 b8 diagonal so maybe he can play c6 right so, so that's on the board okay checking what you have on the board king f5 king f5 so Black either has to stay on the diagonal, so bishop h2, so that white can't play c6, or stick to protecting his pawn with bishop d2. Uh, yeah, I'm just not sure what the big issue with c6 is. So bishop d2, c6, who cares? Uh, bishop b4. <laughs> yeah, who cares? That's <laughs> true. Because either pawn he pushes, the king can stop it. So it Yeah, work. and my pawns right now can't be touched. Because you yeah. take f7, h pawn just runs. So... Right. Yeah, just go here and mm-hmm. just force the pawns to move. That looks simple enough. And you're never going to yeah. be able to take my H pawn. Or even if you do, if I keep the F pawn, I'm just winning. And you can't take my F pawn because the H pawn promotes. So it looks like this is a pretty easy win, actually, for for Steve Berger, who this is an upset, by the way. And he, he was the one who beat uh, Alex Sanko in a really, really nice sacrificial game last week um, that may have been up for game of the week. I can't remember. But... Okay. Um, He's he's continuing to to overperform. Well, we've been seeing a lot of that today on the the lower boards, so good to see it continued. Yeah, no, the this Burger looks Man like... brings home the bacon. That's what Chad is saying. Ooh, <laughs> someone's saying we should swap hairstyles. Um, it's been done, ZZ dude. Although I don't know how I'd feel about a man and a man bun. Oh, that sounded fun. A man okay. and a man bun. A man how and much a man, man bun. could a man bun man if a man bun could man bun? <laughs> Exactly. Um, but the okay. the other thing that people might not know is we've actually, we've actually exchanged shoes as well. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah I felt pretty bad for yeah. you, but I appreciated it because heels are painful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could handle the uh, the man bun look. Although right. I know it's. Uh, yeah, I feel like I just don't have the the body type for a man bun. Oh, okay. I thought it was all the rage now, but it's okay. It is, but having a good body is as well, so I, I, I think I need to make some improvements first. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, this is winning uh, for, I mean, just, just take? Yeah. Take on C6. Do you, do you want to follow out this endgame to the end since it's almost done, or check out? Uh, I think I'm willing to say that, that this one is, is just winning here because mm-hmm. the H-pawn can just run now, and that's, that's all you need to do, play H5, and yeah, just H4. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so wow, the Berlin Bears and the Ljubljana Turtles are now tied. The closest game so far of yep. this central division. There we go. And that's a point for the Berlin Bears just scored on this board here. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that that match is looking very, very close. Um, maybe let's jump to some of the games from the Baden-Baden match. Sounds good. Not just because the name sounds good, but we haven't watched them for a while. Georg Meyer just won just his won. game, so that's a point for the Snowballs. Um, I want to take a look at... MVL's game against Dimitri Collars, which is a uh, Dimitri Collars is a young grandmaster, um, mm-hmm. and of course MVL is the guy to watch. And this looks like a very close game, and both players around five minutes. This is just 
a five minute blitz game now uh mm -hmm. can mvl win this it's, it looks very balanced it does um so what are the the imbalances here obviously black has the past b pawn um but black's king is also a little bit more awkward here since he has less pawns around his king yeah so there's still it's really it's still very hard for white to break through though yeah it's really um the other thing is that after i play b4 I'm yeah. sort of defending that nice pawn with my bishop on f8, which is defending my king. So it feels like a very compact position for mm -hmm. black, but I, I worry about extending that b pawn too far up the board. So overall, position seems very balanced, but I think it's the type of position where MVL is going to be looking to push because it's, it's kind of like when you have a rook end game and your extra pawn is way on the side of the board. While there's <laughs> still a lot of pieces on the board, that can actually be kind of annoying. So he's going to put it on b4, but mm -hmm. I think MVL is going to look to keep the queens on the board for now and and try to play like maybe knight d5 or knight c2 and, and gang up on that pawn yeah that makes sense the more pieces he has on the board especially since a lot of black's minor pieces are tied around his king the easier it'll be for him to put pressure on that b pawn right um and i i guess he's also obviously the favorite player here do you think that plays any role in him pushing the position more aggressively or just because he has a slightly better position anyway yeah, I don't think there's too much in terms of objective evaluation between uh, the players right now. I, I can't really sit here and say that White is that much better. But mm -hmm. uh, again, I think it always plays a role that MVL is just such a known specialist in these time controls. And of course, he's one of the best players in the world. And obviously, yeah. his opponent knows that. So I think it plays a little bit of a role. But, you know, Dimitri Collars is not, uh, you know, the, the kids, I think, they don't get scared as much. You know, that might as intimidate easily, yeah. someone. But some of the kids these days, I mean, they're they're so strong in their own right that I'm not sure that that really plays a role. Right. I can tell you that I'd be scared over here, but I'm not the one playing. True. That's what we. That's been the theme of today. We like seeing the players figure out these yes. tough positions and difficult time situations, and we can just enjoy the show. Exactly. Um, the other game that I wanted to check out was in that same match because you know, if we're speaking of very strong players, we also have Etienne Bacro. On the same team, I mean, talk about a star-studded lineup. Uh, the right. two very strong French players. Um, we got back row against Ina Agres playing the board four. From and he has a very good position against her here. So um, what was just played? B6. Um, pressure on F7 there. The rook on E7 yeah. looks like it can be booted in some way, like rook E8 or knight E6. Actually kind of uh, sort of pseudo traps the rook in there. Um, I'm a little bit curious about the move. 96, but in in the last position, b6 was played because it was actually just hanging, right on b7. Right. But 96 right. looks like maybe a move to watch out for because that rook you know, doesn't have an easy escape. Right. So that's what White should be trying to do here: figure out what he would play after 96. Right. Okay, so he just doubled up his rooks. Um, is would he maybe consider sacrificing on e6? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that it's, it's something to do with, let's say, knight e6, rook 1 takes e6, pawn takes, and maybe some d5 move, or rook takes so e6. So not even taking back right away. Yeah, That's I could take insane. rook takes e6, which honestly looks very, very good. Um, maybe a combination of the two. Something like rook takes e6, king move, and then maybe d5. Open up that bishop as well as the rook. So let's say, for example, knight e6, rook takes, mm -hmm. pawn takes, rook takes, king f8, d5 threatens rook f6 check and uh yeah I, I have to say that that variation looks pretty convincing so i'd be a little scared to play 96 here as black right right um but what so what else can, oh 96 was just played so i don't have to ask what else because we're Ooh. gonna see it on the board which is the best yeah um i don't know if he's gonna go for it but it looks incredibly tempting so i was thinking rook one takes e6 pawn takes and then let's say rook takes e6 what okay. happens after that maybe queen now queen f7 there's rook takes g6 to i'm think about. okay catching up to the position that you're also playing out here just trying to figure out the best way to activate the pieces because there's also that d5 move with rook g7 <laughs> check coming and it's it's so tempting to to play rook takes i I almost can't imagine him passing up the opportunity. The other move right. that you can play is knight e5, though. That's yeah. That's probably why there's knight e5 and been. just straight up going to attack on f7, forcing yeah. black to play back with rook f8. 
Um, oh, but then if he does play rook f8, white can continue with knight taking on c6, maybe? Or not just knight taking on d7? Yeah, um, or if you want to go really aggressive. Or taking aggressive. on f7 and taking the knight after. Yep. Lots of options there. Yeah, taking on f7 looks fantastic. Even knight d7, uh, and then like d5, and knight comes to f6. There's all sorts of... Uh, all sorts of ways to push this position, but I think in aggress is actually like on the verge of some some combinations here. Whether it's knight e5, whether it's d5, whether it's rook takes e6, uh, I feel like white is about to break through with yeah. some. When, she, when you say she's on the verge of combinations, you mean on the receiving end, right? Oh, she's definitely receiving <laughs> yeah. some combinations here, yeah. Yeah. Some one-two punches from uh, the Frenchman. Those sounded like very soft punches, maybe nerf punches. Well, that's because I don't want people to know how tough the punches are, so you actually throw people off with a soft noise. It's a oh, okay. good strategy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, knight e5. So that's yeah. the variation he's going with. Um, I think knight e5 is a move you play because not only is it a very good move, but it's less risky. So I think he's looking at the sacrifices, probably evaluated that it just wasn't necessary, and right. you can't really take on d4 or anything in these types of positions. f seven's loose, and knight e5, uh, if you take it, uh, I think I just take back with the rook, and I renew all these rook takes on e6 threats. This time, even better, though, because the queen on b3 can slide over the king side really easily. Uh, queen g3, queen e3 to h6, and all mm -hmm. those types of moves look really, really dangerous. Yeah, no, th that's great. And I, I guess before we, we see that rest of the combination, I just want to reiterate a bit something you pointed out earlier. The rook on e7 was looking trapped, and the best way for black to continue, and what he must have calculated earlier on, was just by creating dynamic play that black has forced moves, and now his, his rook is fine. So right. there that's definitely the way to continue when you have a piece that's a little bit awkward place, but you have the attack. Well, now that the queen's on f6, it's like... You know, just screaming, yeah. take me, take me. Rook takes e6, played by back row. And I think we're going to see either the move d5 here, which looks really tough to meet, or the move rook takes e6, queen f7, rook takes g6. Right. Queen f7 looks like the only move. And then what you play is rook takes g6. I have to play king f8 to keep guarding my queen. Mm -hmm. And then just so I don't trade the queens off the board, so a move like queen g3 or queen d3 in that position, as long as I guard my rook, I feel like I keep my attacking options alive. Right. Yeah, so queen g3 or queen d3 here look like the two moves I would play. Um, yeah, and, and uh, the position just played out a little bit where white got the free pawn on g6 because the queen was pinned. Um, yeah, queen I'm guessing g3. white's also going to be able to bring in his bishop if needed since he might need an extra piece to checkmate here rook d5 is a move that i really like just because it keeps the bishop out of that diagonal but even a move like bishop c1 right. probably lights out move because yeah. bishop h6 with the rook coming down to g7 g8 no there's yeah. there's no surviving bishop this, c1 is such a cute move here it's like you forgot about me but i'm yeah. back yeah. swinging over to h6 hello yeah no, this 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 should be over which is a point for yeah. the marseille migraines uh, and again Maybe we should Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that match is so level as well. After this point, it's going to be three and a half, three and a half. I don't know if games are still ongoing in that, but actually MVL is still uh, playing. So that's the other one that's going to decide. Yeah, that's, that's the one I was also going to say we should check back in on because they're both at one minute and it was somewhat equal, although we, we agree that MVL has a slightly better position slash he's more likely to push just because he's so good in these types of end games. Yeah, so we're back on that game now. Um, calling the other one probably a win for uh, Etienne Bacro. And yep. uh, MVL has to be a little careful here as Black's pieces are starting to activate. And what we're seeing is he's like, he's trying to Did give up the Did he just miss a fork? Did he just miss this? Because this is our specialty. We come back and then the opponents blunder. But it's MVL, so I assume he didn't miss a fork and there's some magic here. Well, MVL's the one who did the fork. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, for so Dimitri it's more Thomas. believable, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, we have to... Yeah, I guess so. Um, you're right. Uh, More believable in a relative sense. In a relative sense, but it's still incredible. No, to it's see. still not something that... No, just take that. Yeah. Yeah, Ready. knight takes, takes, and that is... Like you said, that's just a big miss there. Well, you know, if we ever want games to just finish, we just got to come back to them, and one, one uh, player is going to blunder. No big deal. Yeah, that's perfect. So yeah. we, we know uh, the extent of your powers now. 
Thank you, thank you. Queen d3 mm. check. Get those queens off the board if you're interested. Yep, that'll be a an endgame conversion here for MVL. And it, so that yeah. means that they're actually going to take the lead in this match, most likely four and a half to three and a half. As I see, Becro has just converted his position officially. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, who is... Is anybody still playing in their matchup? I don't like what MVL has just done, by the way. If I if I had to be critical of something, um, okay, just because that H pawn looks like it's gonna go go down and right after and you take this, this is actually, he, he has oh, to work hard here. He has to work. He does hard have here. to work hard here. You're right. He could have. He should have tried to keep that extra pawn on the B file. Because what you want to do is you want to have the three against two and then stick your rook on the B file, B5, B7, behind the pawn while it's a pass pawn. And that's like kind of the theme of a lot of games we've been discussing is that you just leave your your rook behind the pawn and you're the one who's actually more active. Right. But we'll, we'll, we're obviously going to see some, some technique here. I actually don't know. Yeah. I couldn't really see offhand whether this is like winning or not or if this is known but, right. I guess I just tend to think that MVL is such an endgame expert that he probably knows this so well that maybe right. he's just comfortable playing into it and converting the win. Right. Um, not something I could say the same about myself. <laughs> no, or, I wouldn't have the same confidence here. Right. Rook right. b5, get on a light square. Yeah. Right. Um, so let's see how this one plays out because king e4, I, I'm expecting this the conversion. He's going to get a check on the sixth rank here, like some rook c5. Yeah. And rook goes to c6. And the question is whether f5 needs to be played ever. So maybe rook a6 here. Yeah. Okay. Getting ready for some sort of king e5, rook a7. Ooh, I right. think that's so maybe a blunder. He's just squeezing the king and pushing him down. I just think that's a blunder because now well, I was going to say you could play this move, but um, uh, yeah, he's just going to play rook h6. And if h4, we play g4. So MVL actually had absolutely no trouble with this end game at all. <laughs> not not surprising. Yeah, wow. white just plays g5, rook h6, and, uh, well, might not even need rook h6, depending on the position. Bishop g1, kind of a weird move, and... Yeah, now black's bishop is tied to the pawn. He might get checkmate. I don't know. He's, he has so many ways to win here. Yeah. On time, on the board, winning the pawn, getting a checkmate. Yeah. Uh, well, well, so nice clean conversion on his part. Yeah, I think he has to put the finishing touches. I would swing the rook somewhere over the board mm -hmm. and then just move the king and advance the pawn. But, okay, there oh. we go. That's yep. checkmate. There, There's the mate. Ooh, he won by checkmate. You don't see this very often in GM games. There's normally a resignation going on. Yes, but... that's right. So, <laughs> rare. okay, those... Uh, uh, that round just finished, uh, and Marseille takes a lead. They got the big wins from the top two boards, back row and MDL winning when it mattered. Um, and yeah, very neck and neck on the bottom two boards. And is there a result already? I, I'm just jumping to the Creek War game, which is already over. Okay, let, let me tell me Creek War is not losing. Oh, no, no it's, it's already over. He lost, yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm just showing the final position here where uh, Bishop G6 was played. And it's just because I saw that the it was already 8-2 to two for yeah, the yeah. Barcelona I mean, Raptors. All, they've almost won. They've There's almost no won. More team morale. I mean, they, the uh, Kane's Blitzstream still wants to try their best because they don't want to get relegated for next season in the worst case. And I mean, you I also want to collect those points. Yeah, you want to collect those points. You want to collect those individual points. So that was just a result that... That I saw. So um, obviously, it looks like unless the biggest comeback in pro chess history happens, that is probably going to be the first like official match result, which could be determined this round. Right. Um, but what about back to that Norway gnomes and mosquitoes matchup, which yeah, is uh, they're they're getting problem. lower and lower on time up in that uh, that first okay. match here. Um, so it looks like Grandmaster uh, Johan Solomon is actually beating Grandmaster David Klein. Yes. Oh, that's for sure. This yep. one is just completely over, so that's going to be a point for the gnomes there. Uh, right. I'm looking at Aryan Tari's game, where okay. he is better, but still requires some conversion, but definitely better bishop, up one pawn, right. 
playing for the win against Miguel Admiral. Yeah. Uh, and, and the other game between them with Grandmaster Hansen and I am Liam Roilich, mm-hmm. I think that's how you said you pronounce it, looks like white is slightly better, but also not that easy to convert necessarily. Yeah, here it's actually looking probably easier than than you'd think because I'm going to play king g5 and I'm going to throw in these checks. So rook a7 check here. Got it. And then rook a6 check and like, uh, or even just king g5 to start. So after king e6, king g5, and mm-hmm. I'm probably going to maybe like give up my a pawn in order to collect the rest of these pawns. So I imagine right. that white that is probably, probably going to be able yeah. to win this here. I like what you're saying there. So he's going to convert his advantage on the queen side with a pass pawn into just collecting the rest of the pawns on the king side here. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So either, I don't know if he's going to go for like a knight g5 move, mm-hmm. and then king g7, you always have rook to uh, a7. And if, right. you know, king f6 or king h6, you're running into some checkmate. Yeah, for sure. But he's okay, so g5. another good result for the mosquitoes. Uh, yes, yeah, so this one looks like a result for the Mosquitoes, if he can convert that. And then the final game in that match was Yasso Lopez. Um, looks like uh, is in a really interesting endgame where I'm not sure whether to prefer the Rooks or the Queen. Right. Against Christian I mean, Stuvik home, mm-hmm. but the Mosquitoes really need this point because they're already down 5-3 to the Gnomes, and it looks like Tari and Solomon are going to be potentially converting those two games. And that's already seven points for the gnomes. So you, you got to start collecting some points if you're the mosquitoes here. Yeah, Solomon is just about to win. Right. He just won. So that's official. Yep, now um, official. Yasso Lopez looks like he definitely can't lose. Um, right. Uh, unless uh, something he crazy can't happens. lose. He should be better with the rook pair and the pass pawn here. Yeah. Um, but Very tough conversion. Very, very, very tough. awkward. And tricky time situation. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to um, jump actually to the uh, Ari and Tari game. Um, and let's okay. see how that one plays out a little bit. Um, because Miguel Admiral, by the way, is has definite chances to hold a draw here, which would be extremely important um, for right. the team. Right, his team really needs that. Yeah. Um, and even though the, the Mosquitoes have been performing pretty well since they're They've been playing higher-rated opponents so far. They're still down on the scoreboard. It's now 3-6. So you're very correct in that these last last couples of games are going to be the most important. Yeah. Oof. King g3. If king g6... I mean, it's kind of funny that we're in this position because I'm just showing a few moves ago. There was mm-hmm. a queen on d8 on move 33. Black plays king g7. And white can just play queen d4 check if I want to trade queens and get a pass pawn on d4. And then right. later on, we see this position on the board where he's playing king g3, and clearly he wants black to play queen takes d4. So right. it's like you could have had that, you know, t- 10 moves ago, it was on the board. Now he's probably yeah. regretting maybe not going for it. Yeah, that, that that's a great point, because if white just trades off queens without letting black do it, he's right. not going to have that extra pass pawn, and it's super hard to break through. Because even if he ever gets a pass pawn in the end there by trading off, black yeah. can hold it. By and, and this pawn sure. exchange, everything he's doing is contributing to um, a potential draw. Just more pawns exchanged. And again, if white exchanges on f6, I'll just go ahead and say that's just a draw. Um, oh, wait, black took on d4. That's actually surprising. I think that's a very unnecessary move. Uh, is he trying to play f5? I still don't think that it's necessary, but... He, I think that he's trying to say that with these pawns advanced like that, he he has good chances for a draw. And I certainly agree with him, but I think there's no reason at all to allow a pawn on d4. It's just it's just right. a way to win for white that didn't need to yeah. be there. It, it seems like maybe he was a little bit, I don't know, stressed about the situation. He saw his opponent getting dime, down in time pressure, and he just wanted the queens off the board. I, I don't What's really know why G4? else you would convert. Uh, G- G4 looks like an absolutely ridiculous move. G4. Right, because now the, the pawns are just I don't like stuck. the pawns on the light squares, that's all. Right, right, because they're just, much easier to attack. Yeah, I mean, black just leaves the king on d6, and yeah, white will get his king out wherever he wants. Black can't take any of these pawns, but by the same token, where's the white king going? Like, 
Right. If I leave you can't my bishop, really loop around, can yeah, you? Yeah, if I leave my bishop on the f1, a6 diagonal, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to have to go, like, literally all the way to b8, c8, d8. Yeah, if yeah, If you're yeah, even yeah. trying to do something. But he, he's going to try to do that. Um... Well, my, my issue, Alexandra, is if, let me just say in this current position that the white king okay. is on d8. Sure. Then I play them with bishop d5. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh... and black's actually, like, maybe winning there or something. Yeah, good point. So um, it's like look at the position, even in the best case scenario, sure. where White has managed to get his king all the way to the other side of the board, and you're like, wait, now you're actually losing. Nice job on that progress. Yeah, some well. progress there. So uh, as Black, I'm not concerned here. I'm just going to be sort of shuffling, seeing what mm -hmm. White wants to do, and maybe even punishing like an overstep if you get really crazy as White and and try to win this position, but. I think this is going to be a draw, which, um, like we were saying, very important for the Mosquitoes in this match, uh, for him to save a point here against uh, Tari, who's up a pawn. So that's very good for them if they can pull that off. Right. Um, so, it, so it seems like he is shuffling his king. Do you think maybe he hasn't seen that there's no progress yet, or he's just playing a couple moves before well, offering yeah, a draw? The thing is, he sees it, because if he played king yeah. b5 there, instead of king c3, there was bishop that d5. Maybe. Right, right. So, okay. Yeah, yep. bishop d5 there actually would have been very, very good. Again, here he's going to try to put the king on e4, but as black, I would have actually let him play king e4 and played bishop b1 checkmate after he did that. Right, <laughs> which, right. Which would be a super embarrassing way to, to go out. Uh, what? Hang on. Uh, I mean, I understand what he's doing here, but so, so unnecessary. May as well just why, keep the why bishop. Why did he trade off bishops here? That's just ridiculous to me. I mean, I think that here you really risk uh, losing because I'm going to play e6. Right. So play e6. If king d6, king d4, and I think white's maybe winning now. King d4, king e7, king e5, f3, check. Maybe he's holding because king f6 to go around and help the pawns promote. Uh, maybe black promotes with a check there. He's got to calculate it, though. So tense. You uh, don't want to be messing up here. I guess it just like a much, much riskier way for him to play this position. He just doesn't have time to calculate it. That's the problem. Is he going to go for it? Right. I don't think it works. Oof. Okay, so it's... D despite all of these shakeups, it's still going to be no. A draw. But I, I think Miguel what he wants to do a here. Draw and Aryan refused. No, no, no. But this is really good. He he should do this all this zigzag, gain a lot of time, and then calculate it. So like, yep. do all this. He can go forever here. King g two, king h one, king g one, king f one, all the way to d one to d three. Literally get like a ton of time and then think. Now he has thirty <gasps> seconds. So now he's going to calculate king e five. I, I love how a ton of time is 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. That's uh, a luxury here. Yeah, for sure. King e5, f3, check. King e8, king f6, f2, check on d7, king d8, king f7, and that's going to be a draw. It does not work um, according to my calculation there. And they just they just drew officially. Wow. Um, Oof. Okay, so at the end of the day, result-oriented, that's good for the Mosquitoes. Yeah. Um, we had... Uh, Liam for the Mosquitoes close out that win that was official. Let's jump to the game between Yasso Lopez and Christian Stuvik home eight seconds and the Rooks have just been dominating this position. Yeah, he's he has converted the the Rook pair very well here. Um, yeah, he I like what he did with his position. He makes he's making it really hard for black to keep him in any types of checks. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So probably just h5 now. I think you just get an extra pawn going, right. and it's impossible, really, to stop both of them. Right, right, right. He doesn't even have to think too much here, because he has yeah. two extra pass pawns. The H6. queen can't keep all of them. And now, after queen d5, I could even play rook f3 check, because my rook on g7 is protected. And mm -hmm. after that, I could just play h7. But okay, he's maybe afraid of that. I'm not sure. Yeah, check. Or just gaining some time. Check, and now h7, and lights out. Yep. So, so that's, again, that's a good the Mosquitoes from... with a little comeback there because that's going to be another point for them. So, yeah, it's going to be five and a half to six and a half after this game, which is great because it was looking closer to three six before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good comeback. Um, and yeah, Rook what G5. can I say? Okay, well, Barcelona Raptors haven't won yet. 
They haven't. Well, let's let's take a look at some of those games in that match. Okay. Then. Yeah, since this one is over now. Yeah. So, oh, right for example, Doctor Burger Burger against Boris ninety eight. Oh no, sorry, that's actually the next match. Uh, Peroncio against Paul Velton. Okay. That's uh, that's our friend Alejandro Al- Alvarado Diaz, the the hero. The, yeah. Uh, the hero they need, not necessarily. Actually, the hero they deserve too, because they have all been killing it. So. Although I have to say, his position now is probably not the best (laughs) yeah uh he is so it looks like he's down an exchange right yep yes um but we have this weird dynamic where all the black pieces are on the queen side and maybe you get these ideas like knight f3 knight g5 can be like scary to deal with but i think realistically black actually plays the move knight to d8 and safeguards Mm -hmm. e6 safeguards f7 there opens up the file for the rook. Yeah, and so he's playing this twice. to cover c2. Mm-hmm. Stopping rook c2. Black wants to play queen c2 now. And the knight on a7 jumps into the action with knight to b5. But queen c2 is just a very tough move to meet as well. Uh, I don't know right. why you wouldn't play queen c2 there, but okay. Um, if you were white here, how would you try to defend this position? Ooh, I think it's very close to to seriously losing after queen c2 right um queen c2 he wants to play knight d3 only move i think mm-hmm. queen c2 knight d3 yeah it seems then... like all of white's defensive moves are just forced because he right his, his only idea the is the h pawn right he's got to yeah. just like run that thing yep um, and unfortunately, he doesn't have time to his side. His opponent is very comfortable with three and a half minutes to 55 right. seconds here. He could play a move like knight takes a3, bishop takes a3, rook c3. Mm-hmm. Um, he went just knight c3. I think it probably worked very similarly. Knight c5 is a very tricky move that he's planning after rook takes a3 here. So if rook takes a3, knight c3? Knight c5. Uh, sorry, knight c5 is what and I'm And then picking say, yeah. up that queen on c2. Yeah, that's a cute one. Good <laughs> thing we didn't see. I mean, it would have been exciting to see a blunder, but just too painful for yeah. Paul Melton. No, here he's got to run the h-pawn. Yeah, it's the only way to try. Carry the takes... h-pawn. Wait a... Oh, yeah, there's no more check. Haha, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's why I think the there. I was yep. just dreaming of that fork. Yeah. So maybe Hi, rook... Albert. How are you doing? Maybe rook a1 to h1 to cover the pawn and then just run your own a pawn i think that's maybe the easiest because those knights they look cute but they just they can't do anything they can't move or contribute right and the best thing to do is just not give white any counterplay so by placing your rook on h1 you're pretty comfortable you can just yeah you also threaten rook h2 to just clean up all the the hanging knights there um so actually it looks like for the first time he's, he's gonna be going Going down, uh, Alejandro. He's not invincible, but he's he's still carrying. Yeah, yeah. Um, Queen there, probably just rook h1, and then a or a3 as well. Obviously, a good move. Mm-hmm. I guess we we can see the the finale here since mm-hmm. it's so close. Uh, are, are we gonna see a mate on the board? Probably. I would say probably not. not. Probably not, yeah. Just going to lose too much material and then resign. A3, I don't know. So many ways to do it here. Right. Swinging his rook over yep. makes sense. Yep, so actually, Paul Velton is probably going to win this game. What are the other ones that are going on in this match? Um, because yeah, there's got to be some games. Uh, for example, Madam DD mm-hmm. is playing Miguel Munoz. And okay. that's just a dead draw on the board. Right. But basically, that dead draw, funny as it is, is going to secure the match. Yeah, exactly. They just <laughs> needed another half a point here. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah, th- this one is uh, completely drawn, but um, that means we can pretty much officially say that the Barcelona Raptors uh, have essentially won their match uh, against the Can Blitzstreams. And you'll see right. that. Reflected on the screen as soon as uh, as soon as this does become official there. Yep. That was. I'm curious if they're going to be able to at least try to come back a little bit in in their next 
Because they have one more match they're playing. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so what about the next match? That These ones are a lot closer, and probably the ones yeah. we're going to be paying attention to um, a bit more. Uh, yeah. I already see that the Berlin Bears got a point from Dr. Burger Burger, who continues to impress with his name and his play. Yes, exactly. Um, George Meyer is still playing against Grandmaster Etienne Bacra. That's an actually that's a really strong matchup. Both players extremely talented. Let's check that one out. That's actually from the Baden Baden match against uh, Marseille. Right. And it looks like Bacra is going for going for the attack here. But yeah, like you said, this is a pretty high profile match. You would almost think that it's board one, but you've got yeah. MVL on board one. Right. Right. <laughs> So you that match that is, is coming next. Yeah. Um, what about yeah, Grandmaster we... Splinter against Baby Legs, which is <laughs> Eric Braun. Yeah, I like that name, Baby Legs. Baby Legs and Splinter. It's just, it, one is very aggressive. The other is so cute. <laughs> Splinter <laughs> and Baby good. Legs. Yeah. I, I don't like hearing splinters and legs in the same sentence. Yeah, same. Rook okay. F3, and this looks like the Turtles are, are fighting for survival here because uh, it looks like Eric Braun should be uh, preferred here. He's got that extra pawn, and things seem to be stable in the position. And if he can convert that, that's the Berlin Bears maybe starting to pull away because uh, they've yeah. already got a lead right now. How, how do you feel about the fact that White's King is a lot more centralized. Maybe King. Okay, he can't. He can't play King D5 in Threaten the Knight. F6 is also a little bit under attack. Right. Um, Grandmaster Pas, uh, Pavasovic does have some counterplay here, and obviously we know that having an active King in the end games is very important. But I'd love to hear your take. In yeah. This after Rook F3, if I play, you know, F5, I'm obviously dropping my pawn. So I've got to start with a move like Rook F8. Mm -hmm. um, and then king d5, I'm probably going to meet by king d7, guarding mm -hmm. my knight. And I just need to make one preparatory move, which is b6. Once mm -hmm. I guard that c5 pawn, I can give you a knight c7 check, kick you back out, and bring my own king into e6. And then I've sort of consolidated everything, and I'll be able to slowly boot the king further and further back. So it looks like what I'm seeing here is more short-term aggression that can be met with a couple defensive moves by Eric Braun but once he makes those I think it just flips around completely suddenly black goes on the offensive I'd rather have the knight in, in this position anyway doesn't look mm -hmm. like the bishop has any targets so uh, I feel like if he if he can sort of bring himself to play a few defensive moves he should actually be able to convert this one um, pretty right. easily right makes sense um okay so I guess we can check back in on this game and look at another Ljubljana There's one Turtle game, game I just have to look at because we got this one, which is GM Splinter against Baby Legs. And now we have another person and their username is Regular Legs. <laughs> Baby Legs and Regular Legs. Okay. So that's um, obviously Marco Baldov. Or Baldov. Um, his game. Against Laura Eunuch. But yes, but the, the legs are in full force here. The baby yeah. legs and the regular legs. Is this a ninja or I'm sorry, not a ninja game. I don't know why how they came up with these names. <laughs> regular <laughs> legs and baby legs. Yeah. So this actually looks like maybe is it a, a repetition on the board? I can't tell because if you play King G two, Queen G four, Knight G three, there's always H four. Um uh, maybe Laura's trying to decide whether there's you're saying it, mm -hmm. more to play for. I was saying queen g4 here, knight g3, h4. Right, right. So trying to see uh, how yes. you actually avoid a perpetual. Maybe queen g4, king f2? Um, if king f2, just go back queen h4, and he can't escape. Then knight g3, because now there's no like h4. I'm trying to decide because it's certainly risky. It's scary, right? Because yeah. then black can continue by taking on e5. Uh-huh. So, yeah, definitely he's going to have to calculate this out and see what he's going for. Okay, King F2, maybe that's that's the plan here. Well, I think we're going to find out very soon. Right, Knight G3. Yeah. Knight G3 is the move to consider. Otherwise, basically, they're just going to be shaking hands, and, and that's a draw. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, hi, Alec TV. Good to see Alec in the chat. It's fun to see 
those amazing Fortnite streamers coming in to watch some chess today as well. Hopefully there's a lot of you guys who are getting into chess this year. Why wouldn't you be? I mean, you have the Pro Chess League and, of course, the popular channel Chess Bros with the one and only Amon Hamilton. No, thank you. Right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, oh! So he 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 he's not he's not going for it, and she took on e five. She so, took on e five. Um, yeah, this is about to get very interesting. Yeah, um, with fifty seconds, she took on e five. It's not like she had a choice. Though. It wasn't like she refused to draw. It was actually White who went knight g three and said, "Let's keep playing." Um, the knight covers e two, but a simple move like uh, rook f five check or rook f to e eight. Th those types of moves are coming. Um, yeah, maybe queen g four, renewing the threat of h four. Yeah. Do, do you think this was? I mean. I don't have to ask, do you think it was? It was a bad call on his part. Um, I feel like this is very optimistic. Rook takes e2, huge threat. h4, huge threat. Yeah. Uh, rook e3, just also something to consider, along with rook g5. A black mm -hmm. is playing very very carefree right now. Um, right. And I'm curious, he didn't need to do that, um, because the, the Berlin Bears are actually up. It's 5.5 to 3.5. Yeah. Um, getting a draw would continue comfort continue helping their comfortable lead already yeah no but this is uh this and now is definitely he's probably not good because he's going king f2 back so you right. you know that things have gone wrong when he's not playing moves that are playing for a win he's probably regretting his decision <laughs> yeah yeah um this is crushing if rook g1 then queen f4 check picks up that knight um yep. th this is actually just lost i want to say because knight e4 gets mated rook takes e2 yeah. queen g2 mate yeah what a no, what a bad decision. I mean, Laura is actually the board four. This is why I was saying you got to be careful because for board four, she's very strong, and mm -hmm. you, you often play for a win against the board four just by default. You feel like that's where you have to score points, um, right? On, on you know when you're playing down against their board four, and that's probably why he made that decision. And he's gonna pay for it here, I think, after Rook takes g three. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is bad. Queen g1 if you want to just trade those queens. Trade and be happy with those yeah. two Rook C8. nice passers. Rook c8 is a nice move maybe to throw in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, she's not even trading queens. It looks like she just wants to mate him on the board. Yeah, no, you he deserves it, though. You underestimated me, and you are going to get the full <laughs> punishment. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree with that that logic. <laughs> deserves to be punished. Right. Yeah, Rook e8. Great, great play by, by Laura, and I think she's going to convert this one for the Turtles, which, mm -hmm. I mean, based on the score right now, six and a half, three and a half, they need that point <laughs> very yep. badly. Yep. Yeah. Now just push some pawns. Yep. <laughs> H2, push baby, and then right? push that G pawn, and that's going to be game over with, with nothing to play for. Very yep. nicely done. Official result. He just resigned. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think we can get to uh, that last match, the Baden Baden match. There's a few games to jump to. Um, before I get to the um, the Georg Meyer and back row match, I wanted to to check in with our friend Maxime Vache Le Grave, who is playing Kirill Alexenko here on the snowballs. Yep. Rook takes h6, so just Leon played. Just... So did he just grab a pawn? Yes, he did. What's the material here? What's the damage? Is that just one extra pawn now for... Uh, for Maximia, yeah, he just took a pawn in h6, but he had to put his rook there to do it, right? Which is a, that's right. the advantage that that uh, Alexenko is going to try to take from that is that the rook had to, to misplace itself in order to get that pawn back, and now it has to spend a lot of time getting back into the action. Yeah, um, and I was just looking at how uh, MVL has been doing. So he's only lost one game in the season so far, which is actually a little bit for him, but he has three out of four, so he's playing pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, he was actually, player. The, the player he lost to right at the start of the show, um, mm -hmm. I was saying that the player on the Mosquitoes who beat MVL, he, he obviously for some reason couldn't play this week for the Mosquitoes in their match. So it's kind of funny, right. you beat MVL and then you just don't show up next week. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you want to, when, when you get such a win, you're like, I've, I've done my job. Yeah, here. hang up that jersey. I want to spoil it. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. out with a bang. Okay. Um, well, this is still a really complicated position, even though he's up a pawn. Yeah, uh, this is a, remember the the thing I was saying about Alexenko earlier. He struggled mm -hmm. against the low rated players, but he can really show up uh, against guys like MVL. Um, he's obviously a very capable young grandmaster. So Rook C five has been played, but um, it's looking like um, you know after we take on E four, 
not necessarily right now because I'll take back an e5 hangs, but if I can arrange capture on e4 safely, suddenly f5 and e4 kind of all arise with tempo. So right. maybe move like rook d8 here might be played. Rook d8, and if knight b7, rook to d7. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that a6 pawn is always a little bit loose, right? When, when you leave with rook d8, that bishop on d3 is there. Right. Um, but But how else can you try to hang on to the center here other than protecting it. Yeah, if I, I don't like uh, taking on e4, um, so he is going to move the rook. Oh, so he played rook c8, so he's just trying to trade off the rooks and take with the accepting the fact bishop? that he's going to drop one of his pawns. But I think you I think you grab that, yeah, and then take here, and I mean, there's, there's something that you can do with the bishop here, you want to think, uh, in order yeah. to hit the knight at the same time, like... Right. This How pin is... looks too juicy to, to not have any type of play here. Right. At the very least, maybe bishop takes h7 or something, just, just to try to get one pawn back. Right, exactly. Because um, um, bishop takes h7 does win win the pawn back. Right. Oh, bishop he, takes a6. Okay. He went with that one. Yep. He went with that one. But yeah, th this position is actually going to get really imbalanced now because rook takes a6, rook takes d5, f6. Mm -hmm. And the bishop, I prefer to the knight. But the past pawns, I, so it's, it's like both players have their, their trump cards here. But the annoying yeah. thing is that those pawns just aren't mobile just yet. Bishop e6 is a threat. We'll see the h pawn probably go to h4. Um, white's preferred with the, the outside pawns. But again, black has this, uh, this pawn mass going up the board as well as the bishop, I think, is better than the knight. Right. So, right. so when you say he's preferred, you would definitely take white in this position here. Um, that's, man, that's a really good question, actually. Um, because here, I think we have to play bishop e6, rook c5, mm -hmm. probably start pushing the pawns. I have a right. feeling that that I would rather be that I would rather be black in the sense that it's easier to play because <laughs> okay. I just play like rook d6, uh, rook down, rook check, rook d2. The counterplay plays itself, whereas right. white has to be so accurate. So yeah. I feel like this is a lot easier for MDL to deal with. Maybe move like rook d6. I really like right. here. And especially since it's not a classical game, uh, if you were playing a classical game, you had the time to think of what white should do yeah. here. That would be a lot easier. Yeah. Um, but that game you mentioned earlier, do you want to jump to Georg Meyer against back row? Yeah, yeah, pretty That one looks like uh, maybe some fireworks on the, uh, the G file and, and certainly an extremely imbalanced position uh, we see taking place here. Mm -hmm. And that's what we like to see, these imbalances, right? It makes life a little bit more interesting to see who's going to convert it first. Um, wow, so uh, black has a really ugly-looking pawn structure, but let's not judge a book by its cover so fast. Does he have any compensation for it? Right. Georg Meyer is, um, is he's got the position basically where it's going gonna, gonna to look better later on, but mm -hmm. he's got to deal with the G-file pressure. The only reason that I'm not necessarily a big fan of back row's position is he's just not developed, right? The pieces right. aren't out. If that bishop on C8 was doing a little more, I might feel better. But here, knight E5 looks like a move to play. Uh, mm -hmm. Hang on, we've got an F5 pawn hanging as well. Yeah, he, he is starting to take on f5. You're right. Um, because, but is there is there something after with, knight takes f5, knight takes f4? That's the issue. Because if there's no good discovery, mm -hmm. then that's just a piece. Oh, he didn't even take it. Maybe he was he was not calculating. But we can take an extra second if you want to see if knight takes f5 worked. I was thinking at the end, knight takes f5, knight takes f4. I just mm -hmm. have queen g6 to, to block pretty much everything, uh, all the discovered right. checks. So that's why... It wasn't quite working here. I think he's just threatening knight takes f5. Knight e5 is happening, and you've got the rook on e1 and the rook on f1. Like, just right. perfectly placed. I think black is, is in serious trouble here, and Georg Meyer just has to watch that time, but this could be a, a big win for the snowballs here. Yep. Um, let's see. Right, right, very close match, four and a half to three and a half. Definitely a big win for them, and a very close matchup in terms of playing strength. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the move. I mean, taking on f5 is, is strong here. Knight h4 looks very strong. Like Yeah, knight h4 is a fun move for sure. And just attacking the queen before taking back on f5. Knight also to... I don't know if this is necessarily the best move, but knight e5, 
And if you grab my knight on g3, I have queen takes f5 check, followed by actually knight f7 mate. Um, right. Which could be nasty. But yeah, just knight takes f5. And now you're threatening knight h4 from f3. And then mm -hmm. a huge discovered check coming. Yeah, this is... Uh, this is terrible to play. He doesn't have anything. His king is bad. His pieces are awkward. His pawn structure is nasty. And he's probably just going to keep dropping. Maybe knight d4. I'm just trying to think of ways to get rid of that right. knight from f3. Because right. knight h4 is really going to hurt. Mm -hmm. But if he plays knight d4 and white just takes back. With the knight. Which knight? Takes. That's a good question. We can take back with the with I, with the pawn on f knight on f3. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And I'll play c oh. takes d4. Mm -hmm. And just just hope at this point. I've got my bishop on c8 finally with some light. Yeah, knight d4 was played on the board by back row. Under a minute is Georg Meyer here, and I think knight d4 was probably the best practical choice there. Right. Um, and if at some point after these exchanges are over and white can trade off queens, that's still winning for him because he's he's still up a pawn right i don't know if the best idea is for him to convert into an end game since he also has a lot of pressure here mm -hmm. but if he does he's still better yeah definitely still better um but obviously that would probably be an accomplishment for black at this point based right. on the position that, that he was staring at a couple moves ago uh, i really have a feeling that something like knight h4 it just felt like you were really close to a knockout blow there and mm -hmm. allowing this knight d4 exchange feels like an accomplishment. Yeah, he's simplifying. He's not doing well in the end game, but the simplifications are, are welcomed. Right. Um, okay, I see what you're saying with the simplifications. Do you think perhaps it's easier for uh, George Meyer to play this end game out with 20 seconds if it's simplified? Yeah, it's probably... I mean, it's easier, but there's also going to be some counterplay. That is a pass pawn on d4, let's not forget. And mm -hmm. remember that Georg Meyer's extra pawn is actually the one on g2. So it's not going right. to be felt for a while. And he, I think he's going to be dealing with a lot of quick moves and a lot of potential counterplay from back row. This is a guy yeah. who, you know, he's been against the ropes taking punches the whole game. And you let the guy he's off the ropes. He's for this. You're right. Exactly. So you, you really got to be careful now as Georg Meyer. Um, I see that uh, MVL, they agreed to a draw in that endgame. Okay. So like I said, it was really imbalanced for both sides. I couldn't really tell who was preferred. Um, Which is surprising that they'd agree for a draw, neither player trying to play it out there. Yeah, I'm looking at the game, and it was actually a, a perpetual check where okay. MVL just that felt... that makes sense. Yeah, he couldn't give up any ground, and, and so that makes a bit more sense there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Seem, it makes sense from the last time we looked at it. G4 um, played. I guess we're sticking to Meyer and Bacro's game for a little longer. Yeah. I'm on this one right now. Uh, a move that I would like to see from Black is maybe A4. I feel like that's a really annoying move to just lock up all those pawns over there. But maybe a, we just don't have time for something like that because we have to remember Black's playing off the back foot here. Right. Um, yeah, I do like your A4 idea. It makes a lot of sense going into... Pawn on a light Central. square. Yeah. There's D3. Yeah, this is... What I mean, like the rook comes to e2, mm -hmm. there's going to be counterplay. B b2 is hanging. So maybe... Yeah, I guess he, he missed his chances to close it off in a much better position earlier on. There's um, rook to e5 here. Like maybe take on f5, play rook e5. You, you can simplify some pawns. That actually looks like it might completely work in the sense that after queen takes f5, g mm -hmm. takes f5, rook e5... Mm -hmm. I'm going to then take your f5 pawn and play bishop takes b2 after. Right. And if you play uh, bishop d4 after rook e5, we trade bishop. Suddenly it's a rook end game. Black plays rook f2 at the end of that line. Again, I think black yeah. is totally fine here. What white would have to do here is try to grab d3 and potentially a5 or c6, any other pawn. But uh, Rook e5, b4 was, was a move that I had just missed there. So he's doing this first. So there's no b4 and now rook e5. That makes more sense. Nice, and he just played... Okay, so he played Rook D7 here. He's getting to five seconds on the clock. Three. Okay, okay, he okay. did it. Yeah, he's, he wants to simplify. He wants to simplify. Yeah. Yeah, takes, 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 and I think they honestly might offer a draw here or just agree to one. Yep. yep. But this I is think. definitely drawn here. 
And what does that mean for the match? Currently, it's six to four for Marseille.、Mm -hmm. And this game is still ongoing. And is there one other game still going on in this one? I think、uh, there probably、yeah. is. There should be. Let's find it. Snowballs against Wiki Six. Still looking for it here. Right, Rook takes e6. Okay, I mean, they're, they're playing this out, but I, it might even be like just unnecessary. Rook goes to c1, and you play a3. You gotta be careful that you don't let that pawn get too far up the board. Yeah, I was gonna say, get that king back to g2, right? Before you get checked.、Right. Yeah. There we、yep. go. So now Rook g1 doesn't work. Um, we'll probably see c6, king c7, and king h2. Or I'd say c6, yeah. And just shuffle the king to g2 and h2. And、yep. meanwhile, black will probably play king、uh, d6, c7, and they'll just、yeah. draw like this. Yeah, they're both stuck shuffling their kings here. Right. Well, I mean, th this would have been a pretty important win for the snowballs so that they could have closed in the gap a little bit going into、right. their last game.、Um, okay,、uh, shall we jump back to the Norway match? Because、uh, that one is, I think they're in their final. Yeah, yeah. Their final leg here. Right.、Um, so the, the game between Grandmaster Ari and Tari and Grandmaster Dave, David Klein is underway、yep. there in an endgame, under、one. five minutes. Top boards playing. Yeah, that's the thing about the final round, which is always exciting is, you know, board four against board four, et cetera, board one against board one. You get, everyone、mm -hmm. has. Has a pretty close、uh, matchup, usually rating wise. Right.、Um, and I'll, I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. Oh, sure. <laughs> you oh, mind sure. holding down the fort there? Oh, I don't know if I'll be capable, but、uh, I'll do my best. All right. We'll get some alone time with the chat. Oh, this is great. Finally, we get to see the,、uh, the bus driving right at the double decker bus is driving straight at us, chat. This is.、Um, This is rather intimidating, actually. I, I don't know how I feel about this. There's a bus dri driving straight at me. Anyways,、um, I'm taking a look at the,、uh, at the Norway match because、uh, this match is going to get decided here in the, in the, final, uh, uh, in the final leg.、Um, is this the third round? Or... No, this is the final round, yeah, for, for Norway. So, what we're going to see here, Tari. Just played the move b4. He's activating that bishop, but、uh, it looks like David Klein is, is the one who has a little bit of the push here. I'm not impressed by this knight necessarily. It's playing defense here, and yeah, if we can remove it, then the d pawn falls. So I think there's just going to be too much pressure on the d pawn here. I think that Tari has to work hard to even draw this one.、Um, taking a look here at this game, because it looks like we might even be getting. Some、right. quick type of result. I am back. Hi. I'm, I'm sure my, my chair was a good replacement for me while I was gone. Well, no, actually, when you left, I was able to see a double decker bus driving straight at me、um, <laughs> behind you. <laughs> so little, that was actually scary, rather、yeah. intimidating, yes. Yeah, well, we're back. Okay.、Um, so are, are we still on the same game? No, you switched to Liam. Yeah, I'm watching、Wallet. Liam's game just because there's a huge time. Uh, difference and white looks like he's just completely winning. So, this is a、uh, looks like a point for the Norway gnomes here, which would bring them to seven and a half. And then, suddenly, one more win for the team actually clinches the match. Yep, this is a really exciting game to be looking at. I'm sure they're feeling, I mean, I'm sure Liam is feeling the pressure here. Yeah, unfortunately, there's just not much to do after a move like king h7. You're gonna play knight g5 check. Yeah, I could play. For example, king takes h6. So king takes h6,、uh, mm -hmm. knight f7, knight f7 check. check. Yeah, yeah king back to h7. And、uh, okay, he took it. It's winning, so I can't really say anything.、Um, right. Whether it's necessary. I know, I know you, you like to expect the more accurate lines, but. Maybe this, no, I think this, this might be the most accurate just because no need to hang on to the material and prolong the game when you know, everyone knows, we're going to see the Lucina technique. And that's right, how you win、right. here. Rook to g1 is going to be game over. Well, he's going the long way, but Rook g1 and King g7 was much faster. Yeah. 
Um, Rook he, G2 should be played. I, it makes it makes sense that he's doing this because it's a classical end game. He's probably studied and knows in his sleep what he's trying to do. Chat is get his king to f5 and block with the rook on f4. Um, king f5 and yep. game over. There it is. Just like Alexander was saying, rook f4 would be the next move after rook f2 check. So like I was mm -hmm. saying, that is a point for the gnomes. And let's find some of the other uh, games in that match because one more win and the gnomes over. can clinch yeah. it. Um, I was saying that Aryantari is in a tough position. I want to look at Johan Solomon's game. Yeah, because the queen is on h8. <laughs> yeah, such a weird position. Um, but knight e5, by the way, it looks like a crushing type of move. Uh, You're it, right. This is a, is he gonna checkmate with his queen on h8? So this, so weird. Yeah, because after king e8, he just takes on g8. Yeah, we're gonna see knight e5, king f6. That's that's right. the weird move right. we're gonna see. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, um, king f6, and then we're gonna let's see how can white continue there. I can say a very funny line would be knight e5 check, king f6. Queen takes mm -hmm. g8, queen takes g8, knight takes d7, and the knight takes b6, just to like collect all the minor pieces. And, and, and play against the and queen. Then, and then play against the queen. I don't know how valid that is, but it looks really funny. Yeah, it, it definitely looks funny. Because um, if knight I takes don't... d7 in the current position, queen takes, queen takes g8, queen takes d6. Doesn't quite work there. In, in the current position, you mean on move? After king f6. Got which, it, after king f6, yeah. okay. So we can't just like win a piece outright. By the way, the person pressing here is on the mosquitoes. So this, I don't think that we're going to see the match closed out for the gnomes by Johan Solomon. It, at least it doesn't look good. Um, That's going to be here. six and a half to seven and a half. I love close matches. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Um, all right, but there, I, there has oh, to be something. I, I have another funny line. Okay. Queen takes g8. Queen takes g8. Knight you takes d7. You really like sacrificing your queen. Okay. Yeah, just wait for it. King f7. Uh, knight f8. And the queen, the queen on g8 is almost trapped. And I want to play bishop takes e6 check. Right. Um, what can black do? Try to push uh, <laughs> Probably g5 have to take makes, my knight. <laughs> or yeah, you're right. He has to sacrifice the queen for the knight. Yeah. Bishop f8. There you go. There's a cute move. I, it's just the type of position you know there's going to be one of these type of moves in, right? Yeah. Bishop f8 yeah. is very cute. He spent a lot of time on it. King takes e5. What are we going to see here? Because if I'm... queen takes g7, there's knight f6. Oh, and then queen g3. Queen g3. Oh, is there a mate there, though? After queen takes g7? Queen takes g7, knight f6, queen g3 check, king e4 forced, and the king is running, and I just... Oh, I think there is a force mate there, actually. Yeah, it, it seems like he just went to take the knight, I'm guessing, with... I don't like that, though. Knight. I think that's... I mean, it's fine, and obviously he's probably going to convert this, but uh, just if you're wondering, I think there was a force mate there. A force mate. Right. Yeah, queen g3, queen f4, king d3, queen c4 check, queen c2 check, and queen d1 mate. Kind of chase that king around. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, with, with a king in the center there. Queen checking, the pawns taking off his squares. It does seem like. But he G7 is there uh, G7 mate. is loose here, and there's probably. I mean, they can't really right. defend it. I can play G5, mm -hmm. which is an idea. But yep, then Queen G7. Queen G7 looks terrifying, though. It looks even worse than the position we were just looking at. Because we have to remember, after Queen F6 on Queen G7, we always have a nice Bishop D6 check, mm -hmm. just winning that queen. Yeah, so queen g7 forces king e4, and then, oof, I don't know. It's like well, come here. on, find the mate, Miguel. Yeah, something. Bishop there, bishop great move. Six. Yeah. Threatening queen e5, but remember, queen e5 is not mate, so he's just going to sprint. Yeah, I mean, now he needs to find another check, so he has to bring his queen closer to the second and first rank. I'm not sure which one. There's queen a1, there's queen b2. Oh. Or just bringing in the bishops. So queen c8 sense. is going to be played. There it is. Mm -hmm. And maybe queen a1 here. Queen b2. Okay. Queen b2 threatens right. queen d2 mate. That's pretty mm -hmm. convincing. Got to play, yeah. I don't know, bishop takes e3. He's got five seconds. 
Yeah, I like what White, White's doing here. He's using his two bishops to control as many of Black's King's escape square as possible. And now he's bringing in the queen after. Very clean, I would say. If not necessarily the fastest way to mate, it's still a very clean way. Right. So queen d2, king e4, bishop c2, check. Not a force mate, but king... I'm just saying, where's the exact mate? I just don't see it. King can go to e5 here, and then there's bishop c3. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's just keeping track of all these squares is getting confusing. Right. <laughs> right. No, I, I totally agree. Um, on the bright side, it's Miguel's job to show the mates. So yeah. Oh, now Black's getting low on time. Spectacle. Yeah. Oh, this looks like a really fun game, but I, uh, I don't yeah, see As long as you're not Black here. Yeah. This is a very depressing position to be in. Yeah, I think you just check and Bishop C3. Yeah, and you're going to get the queen here. Yep. Okay, okay, so that is going to be a point for the Mosquitoes. And I'm going to jump quickly to the game of Yasel Lopez mm -hmm. and Torborn Ringdahl Hansen because an extra pawn for white, but a tough position to convert here. Uh, definitely winning, though, I should point out. And if he wins, that's the match that's it. for the Gnomes yeah. there. Oh, the Gnomes are now 8-6, so they just need a draw. Uh, okay, so Ariantari did hold that draw yep. against uh, against David Klein, and we'll probably. I think it's I think it's actually is it eight to seven now? Yeah, because that game of Johans just finished. So this is for the win right here. All he needs yeah. is a draw, which means you know he could just offer it if he wants. But essentially, if he wants a draw, play King D three and King C three and just win the match. But yeah. I would be tempted to to really go for the win here, Bishop D one. You'd yeah. be tempted to go for the win. Yeah. Gotta, guess... you gotta, you gotta get those fantasy points. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know if I would do the same thing in his position. I guess it's so hard for White to lose that there's no harm in playing for a win. So it, there was a point there. He might end up just taking a draw anyway, but we'll right, see. right. Okay, so I think we can comfortably say that the gnomes won but <laughs> well i'm just knight takes h5 can be played here which is a little disturbing because king e4 knight g3 so he's finding every possible way to potentially lose it that's all he just wants to make it interesting you know he <laughs> heard you saying that you would play for the win and he's like no nah, no nah, i'm gonna teach you to be a team player mon Take this is notes. really bad yeah this is really bad um i would almost play b6 here out of fear and he did King takes b6, king d4, and just get that king into e5, you know. I'm really, chat is confusing me. Uh, okay, back to, this game is also confusing me. Wherever I look, I'm <laughs> um, curious how white is trying to force here. But now now it seems like his king is where it needs to be, so he's going to... Yeah, now he's, he's fine. Gonna draw. Uh, yeah. I thought maybe king d4 needed to be played instead of g4. Mm -hmm. which is what he's going to do now. But king takes f4 here. Right. And, and yeah, this is going to be a draw. He can take the knight if he just wants to draw. Yep, easily. take that knight. That's what you should do. That is 100% a draw. And oof, that is a very, very narrow escape. But officially, uh, as soon as this pawn gets captured here, that is All a draw right. and a win for the Norway gnomes. Eight and a half, seven and a half. Holy smokes, that is very, very close. So Norway won their match. Um, we saw earlier, we, we won't pay attention probably to too many of the Barcelona games just because that match is already decided eight and a half to three right. and a half. Right. Um, um, over yeah, there. let's look at, so obviously Marseille, Migraine, and Baden Baden Snowballs is yep. closer, but the Berlin Bears and Ljubljana Turtles are further along. Right. Um, so what about some of those matches there? Yeah, we haven't checked on the, the baby legs or the regular legs. Or, yeah, there's so many know, legs the, to, to yeah, keep leg track of. Yeah, crew here. So what about, you want to start with the baby or the regular? I mean, I'll let you choose. Uh, let's let's start with the, the baby legs. Okay. Let's build our way up to right. stronger legs. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad you like that logic. Uh, also, the baby leg game is a little bit more interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this game looks like there's like uh, shades of a Benko here. There's shades of a Benoni here. Yeah. Uh, just checking what happened earlier on. Okay, it was a, a yeah, it, it looked like a Benoni. 
right. starting from a King's Indian position. So um, this is seven and a half for the Berlin Bears. So we want to be paying attention to if any of the Berlin Bears players can win, that's the match right there. Yep. Yep. So everyone Good point. on their team is playing for yes. a win. So it's baby legs game, regular legs game. <laughs> and then who else is uh, is playing? Oh, yeah. Grandmaster Splinter is playing yep. as well. But this one right and here, Burger, I have to Burger, say. Oh, yeah. Burger we... Burger. That's right. Yeah. Burger Burger um, can deliver a, a nice meal for the team. I would not be surprised. Uh, well, actually, looking at his game. The burger? Yeah, yeah. He, he The burger is up a pawn. Um, right. And it, it, I needed to check for a second if he had any difficulty defending his king side, but he has a knight on f6. He's not really in trouble. Yeah, the knight on f6 is, uh, is nice. Um, maybe we'll see bishop to e5, um, mm -hmm. because if you take, yeah, take with the pawn and, and maybe h7 is loose there but i can't say that this is a an attack that i'm very optimistic about the bishop on b1 against a pawn on g6 is not that effective mm -hmm. and uh, it almost looks like a pawn from e3 has just like vanished from the position right okay. I, I, I... <laughs> where is it yeah, good point. it just it just got wiped off he didn't need it um she didn't need it sorry well, so from Blythe's perspective, uh, his, his knight on d7 is a little awkward if he were to improve the position of one of his pieces here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if I need to do something defensive, knight to f8 always covers everything. The only right. reason I'm not keen on that is it does allow bishop e5 pretty strong, and then the rook slides to f3 with some really nice f-file pressure. Yeah, good point. Let's, let me, I guess we can check out on another... So this was Burger's game. Yeah, um, I do see the. Uh, I do see them with Bishop e five on the board, um, which is I think this is how you have to play. Just Bishop e five, Rook to f three. I mean, there's just no way that an attack like this should ever pan out where it, it just suddenly works for some reason. But mm -hmm. um, I but can what say... else would you try here as white? Otherwise, you're just going to get crushed slowly being down a pawn. Yeah. Your, your, so, your only chance is to have black slip up. And it's reasonably dangerous. So I'll present a variation. Um, let's say that I play like a5 in the current oh. position. And at some point, we should check on MVL and George Meyer, another very strong matchup with a pretty interesting position, but it's still early. Just making right. sure chat knows we're going to check that as well. Oh, yeah. No, that's going to be a, a focal point for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, chat, you can breathe. We're going to look yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I haven't forgot that that incredibly big match is happening. Yeah. Uh, yep. the, what I wanted to say was for white, uh, something like a5, rook f3. And if I play like b4, my idea to maybe kind of break through would be knight takes f7, king takes f7, queen takes h7. Utilizing the rook f3 pin, now my bishop on b1 is like an absolute hero hitting the g6 pawn. I'm going to play queen takes g6 next, and actually everything kind of crashes through there on the king side. So those are the types of ideas that uh, Laura is going to be playing with here. And, uh, you know, Steve is up a pawn, but... He's going to have to deal with a pretty serious attack. And sometimes just being attacked is something scary enough. Right, right. Um, okay, so that was that one. I want to look at the other games from this match and just see if anyone... Uh... Uh, okay, so the game between Yuri Borisek and Grandmaster Eric Brown is... Actually, no, it's... it's... It's still pretty complicated. So. Yes, yeah, so that was the one we were on initially. There's also mm -hmm. Boris Markoya against uh, Marco Baldolf. And the... Well, yeah, actually just up an entire piece is uh, the, the player for the Turtles. Which, you know, that's that's a bit of a comeback right there. So, right, right. yeah, up a full piece and definitely going to win that game. So the Berlin Bears are not going to get their point on that board either. And I yep. think... The final one was Michael Bezold against Dusko Pavasovic, uh, right. GM Splinter. And yes, how could I forget that name, Splinter? Right, and this game, if I'm looking at it, looks crushing for White. So I feel like between this one and the game against Laura, the Berlin Bears have very good chance to you know score one point somehow there and close mm -hmm. this match out. But we'll definitely be uh, 
paying close yeah. attention to that, obviously. I, I think this this game is definitely the the most clear. The most winningest. Yeah, the most winningest to use proper grammar. Yes. No, the, um, this looks very good. Queen's coming into f6, crushing position for white. Yeah. I don't know. I, I hate. I would hate to be white in this position. You'd hate to be white? Uh, sorry, I'd hate to be black. Oh, you'd hate uh, to be white, would you? No, 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 no. You, you know don't want the pressure of, uh, you know, closing of out the, with the win? Yeah, I don't want the team looking at me saying final win or we never talk to you again. Right. Yeah. So you could go join the other German team. That's, That's true. Yeah, the snowballs. I heard they're recruiting you. Yeah. yeah. Um, Queen no, A2. sorry, I meant, it meant black. Everything is hanging. Yeah, here we can just defend that rook or deal with that because queen f6 is coming along with like yeah. knight takes e6 or rook takes e6 or the hanging mm -hmm. rook on e7, all sorts of things. Um, yeah, and, think... and white's king, even though he doesn't have any pawns next to him on f2 and g2, there's yeah. there's just no way to attack them. His, I, I guess that the tough thing about this position is it seems like there's almost no counterplay. Right. Whereas in the game with... Uh, WIM Laura Unik, at least she has some exciting ideas. So, something, right? There, there's at least yeah. something to play for. There's a lot of sacrifices on the king side and, and uh, some dangerous right. ideas. Right. Um, yeah, so if I if I had to say it, I'd probably say that Berlin looks like a big favorite um, in to win the match, but that's mainly because what I see on the screen right now, which is this game against Pavasovic looks completely winning for white. Yeah, I agree. H6 is hanging, queen f6 is, is uh, on tap, and he just played the nice move rook f1, which is just, you know, don't rush with queen f6 when your rook's hanging with check. Just take care of that, and suddenly black has to deal with all the same threats um, Right. once again. Right. Yep, I, yep. Don't see, I don't see anything to do Cont here. Yeah, this is just continuing the theme of trying to make sure you squash all of your opponent's counterattacks. There's just no point to humor them whatsoever. Right. Um, what is the crushing blow you would recommend here? Oh, I'm still... Okay, so the, the, there's just so many things to look at. There's C6, that's hanging. There's H6, that's hanging. Yeah. Um, you know, if I was... No, I, I wouldn't get adventurous, never mind. No, well, okay, so those are the two moves I'm looking at. But queen takes H6 is just so obvious that... Right. I don't know if it's worth playing, but knight takes E6 is probably also possible... Because if rook takes e6, takes, takes, queen f6, king d7, rook right. d1, and followed by queen d8, checkmate. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I see that idea. So um, that could be played as well. Of course, you also have to like even consider like f5, like just all these moves that just bring every piece into the attack. Mm -hmm. um, so between all that, you also have just, like you said, the simple queen takes h6 yeah. uh, or queen f6 check. So... Choosing from a bunch of great options here. This is a nice way to play it. And he also has, you know, five minutes and a half. He can calculate these lines to his heart's desire and then play it out when he's ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That looks like it. Um, so do we want to take a look at uh, some of the games from the, the next match? For example, uh, before we get to that MVL game, we'll just look yeah. at some of the others like back row I see is in. The thick mm -hmm. of it with uh, Alexienko looks like a very nice position for back row, just looking at it for the first time. Okay. B4, knight B3, knight D4. Um, I would be very comfortable here. Rook C1 as well with uh, the white pieces playing for, playing for a win. So this looks really good for Marseille, who mm -hmm. just needs two wins somehow. And just you've got... two wins. Well, the this thing is... This is definitely the closest. <laughs> yeah, it's the closest. And the thing is... You've, you need two wins, and you've got back row, and you've got NVL in your team. So it's like, well, maybe they can do it. Yeah. Um, the, the, the powerhouse. I was just going to jump to that boys. game before the, the chat has my head. The NVL, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say. I was just looking out for you because someone might. You know, yeah, I appreciate that. That's what, yeah. that's what commentators do for one another. Right, right. <laughs> no death by crowd. No, mob. no. And if I'm looking at this structure, I'm saying French defense, and that's exactly what this opening was. Georg Meyer mm -hmm. has his French that he he plays time and time again, and he's he's Yay, very comfortable French with French fans. It. Woo! Okay. The thing is, I think he's actually not a fan of the French. Funny enough, George Meyer. Yeah, like he plays so he it, but plays I don't it? think he likes it. So he's one of those players who likes suffering, right? <laughs> yeah. The masochist players. I don't like it, but 
I'm just the best one. <laughs> yeah, I just have one. to keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rook C8 played. This looks like a... Um, I mean, the French is not an, an opening that um, produces, like, amazing opening advantages or anything. So when you get a right. position like this, especially against MDL, I imagine you got to be pretty confident. Um, you know, this, this is sort of... Uh, as good as it gets, maybe. <laughs> for for a, a French position? <laughs> yeah, against MVL. Like, yeah. I, what more can you expect? Right. No, I, I can't disagree being a French player myself. This looks pretty decent. Um, we got that standard uh, queenside majority, which right. um, is always in play, that if the queens get exchanged, white will usually be playing on just because, uh, you know, he wants that A4 idea later, break up the, the pawn chain and mm -hmm. try to, to use that queenside pawn uh, majority. Uh, I just see the Barcelona Raptors, we can just announce that official final score, 11 to five. They beat the Cannes Blitzstream, so. 11 to five. Yeah, well so, the, ch the chess bras also had an 11 to five score this week, uh, both yeah, that's let, true. let me remind you. Did somebody just cheer in the back? Yeah, no, we have a cheering squad. Uh, chess yeah. bras is also 11 to five, so that's yeah. not a, a score. And the St. Louis Archbishop, Webster uh, Windmills, and also, the Australia kangaroos. So I guess it's not that uncommon. Right. It's just how it started, right? It was 4-0, yeah. and then it was like they scored eight points practically in the, in the sec by the second or third round. So it right. seemed like it was so really So they did bad. have a mm -hmm. um, relatively good comeback. But um, they, they did get some points on the table at yeah, the end. Yeah, the boys are cheering there. Nice, nice. Uh, Berlin Bears, by the way, uh, they did win. I'm trying to see which... Yeah, it was the board we were just looking at, by the way. Uh, Knight takes right. e6. That move I was mentioning was oh, played so he, on the Oh, so he took on e6? Yeah. Nice. And then okay. he just resigned. So that's official that the Berlin Bears have won that match. So let's stick with the Marseille Migraines against the Snowballs. Pay attention to the four matches here. Let me try to bring yep. up the other ones because this is the only match still going that we need, yep. to, uh, we need to really watch. Yeah, I'm uh, bringing all of those up as well. So what are the positions looking like? I still think back row is favorite against um, Alexienko, so that's good for Marseille. Uh, in this position, I don't think MVL is a big favorite here, uh, but I think the position is, is very, very level between right. these two so, guys. So they need two wins. Okay, They need two wins, and that. the Snowballs need a lot of wins. They need three wins. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you how many. It's just a lot. It's just a big number. <laughs> yep, yep. That's a lot. Um, okay, so we, we haven't looked at uh, their fourth board just yet. Maybe we could take a quick look there since it seems like Definitely. the Marseille migraines. So in an aggress here. Actually, um, I don't know if they're doing better. Let me take a closer look here. What's the, first of all, what's the material count? That's always important. What is it? Right, right. Um, so. One pawn for white extra, yep, but white, it looks like hasn't... things might be falling here, like. A takes before, C takes. If you trade the bishop, I don't know if you should, but black can at least get the pawn back on A2 if need be. Right. I think that one thing to keep in mind is if you take on B4, I might take your bishop first and then take back. Right. So I don't lose that pawn. So I think that you might want to start by bishop takes D4. Right. Bishop takes D4 first. And um... then if I take with the pawn, you simply grab b4 for free if i take with the rook you grab b4 and you uncover like you were saying the rook coming to a2 next move so i think yeah. bishop to bishop takes on d4 is important i think the only reason that there's even consideration here is maybe other moves like e5 or that, i don't know some other aggressive moves rook b8 but i'm not a big fan of this move here huh so uh stefan just took on b4 um, Bishop takes g7. Bishop takes g7 seems like the way white wants to continue if white's trying to clasp yeah. on to her pawns here. Uh, I should point out that although I'm not the biggest fan of this move, I think that black is still completely better. Like, Bishop mm -hmm. takes g7, king takes, pawn takes b4, just rook a4 and rook b8. Like, I am going to win the pawn. It's right. just, I, yeah, I think it was yeah, maybe you're... cleaner with the bishop. But either way, that. This is a very good position for black. So that's another position, though, that looks good for Marseille. Right. What is the board three matchup? Dimitri Collars mm -hmm. against Dimitri. Alvin Delorme. And what is the body count in this endgame? Rook d5 is an extremely strong move, move uh, because it's going to force rook takes d5. So at least for the snowballs, it looks like this is going to be a victory. Yeah. Yep. 
very white whites important. up a pawn here and it's easier to yeah, play with, with a knight versus the bishop here you want to trade there most likely put that knight maybe on d5 or just bring the king so mm -hmm. we could say the snowballs can expect a result here but um, being able to to fend off the other positions is going to be the real question right um and, and checking back in quickly to the George Meyer and yep. MVL game. Yep. So they've, they've simplified. They're in a rook and pawn end game, equal material. Obviously, there's still a lot of. Yeah, this one is looking on more and more drawish, I have to say. Uh, obviously, okay. you, you want to say that MVL uh, just has the pass pawn, which is something. But mm -hmm. um, I don't think that uh, Georg Meyer is going to be concerned here. The only thing that's concerning to me is the time situation. Just. Right. You know, uh, MVL is kind of going to keep this game ongoing. He's probably looking at his, his teammates' results, trying to see whether they need a big result from him or if he can just draw. Because a draw mm -hmm. from him brings the team to seven points. Um, Which is, yeah, it's not that close. I don't know if he's checking on how his his teammates are doing. It might be yeah. distracting for him. So he probably doesn't know how, how the other positions are. If he um, is, also, or... if you guys want to see, he is also streaming live. If you want somebody to spy in on there and come back and yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah, we need some uh, assets. Yeah, come on, spy team. I just linked his his, his stream in the chat. <laughs> right. Yeah. So he's going to take on c three. Uh, if people are looking at other boards, I think they're going to see that the board four position looks extremely good for Marseille, uh, which is encouraging. They'll see that the board three looks very good for the snowballs. And mm -hmm. that board two is is a pretty balanced position now. Uh, I still think that back row is doing very well, but okay. um, very, very tense position between, I'll just jump to it, back row and Alexenko on board two. So he does check the teammates all the time during his opponent's turns. Okay, makes sense. So he knows yeah. what's going on. He knows what's going on. Uh, he mm -hmm. has a rook end game against Georg Meyer. He can just sort of keep alive. Uh, he can make simple, quick moves while he checks the other boards and and just uh, evaluates yep. what what the team's results going to be. Right. It would be really rough for him to try to push for for a win here. Right. Uh, I'm in the back row game and I'm wondering what happens after rook a to c1. Like. Okay. What about this pawn? I think he's going to go for c4 after that. Right, because there's no other way to defend it. There's um, no other way. C4 and try to loosen up that a pawn. Yep. I love those moves when there's only one option. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, if you don't go for it, I'm about to play king e7, and if I get king to d6, suddenly, yeah, I think you got to play this right away. So c4, mm -hmm. you, you just got to play it, because the knight on d2 covers b3. So right. you have to play this right. move forced. Now he has to, he can consider taking on a4 here. Right. Is there any other good option here? I guess if you take on a4, then white takes on d5. That's not looking so hot. Yeah, because the only thing to consider there is taking on c3, followed by rook b2, trying to like get some back rank stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sure that that works. The a pawn is dangerous, though. You can't underestimate how quickly that pawn can run. If you just take on a4, uh, let's say it takes on d5, takes c3, rook b2, I don't know, rook d3. I might play bishop b5. And a4. And then that pawn is extremely, extremely fast. So I think you got to so be very you, careful. You do, you do like that idea. Oh, okay. So rook b2. Yeah. And he um, might be doing it in a sort of different order here. Mm -hmm. um, um, if any of the rooks go to c2, he can just trade it off and then take on a4 because white won't be able to take on d5 since then it will be pinned. Um, right. The only thing about that line is you allow me to maybe play rook a2 at the end and grab the a5 pawn. Right, um, rook a2 and then, I don't, I don't think d takes c4, rook takes c3 works, probably not. Yeah, c3 I have knight b3. It's very close though, because I, I also have back rank issues, right? Mm -hmm. uh, knight b3, rook b8 in that position. Yeah. And it's actually closer than then it's you think, tricky, yeah. Yeah, no, there, there's a definite chance that that could work. Hmm. So, I mean, other than playing the rook on c2, the only other option, can would he want to move his knight? Probably not. After rook b2? Yeah. Yeah, if you move the knight, let's say knight f3, mm -hmm. then 
Um, then I can maybe just take on c4 and you can't take it back right away because Yeah. of the mate. And And then I am you're going to take leaving a4. that rook on b2, which is pretty annoying. Right. Especially if we're going to get a past a pawn here, so. Okay, a few results. Um, Georg Meyer and MVL drew, and Okay. the, the result that I said was going to come in on board three happened, and Dimitri Collars won his game. So it means that it's 7 7 right now, Alexandra, in this match. Very close situation here. Seven Yeah. seven. This is the close end game we're here for. Yeah. The, this game between uh, back row and Alexenko is so important. I'm going to stick with it, but I just want to give people a glimpse of the other board here. Just Um, to see how it's going. Ina Yeah. Agrest against uh, Stefan Regoli. And black is doing very well, but it's not like the material is technically even. It's just that king on e5 is so well placed. e4 is loose. b4 is loose. Uh, so Ina really has to, to hold here. Also down two and a half minutes on time. But let's go back to that other game and stick with it because this is going to define everything. And our lines on the board, uh, I Oh, should say okay. your line of It's D happening. takes C4 is happening. This is... I'm as shocked as you are. Because <laughs> now um, if Rook takes A4, uh, C3, Knight B3, Rook B8 I think is extremely powerful. yeah, Rook B8. Um, and then what, Knight C1 doesn't work. You're right, because of Rook B1. Uh, And if he moves the king, he takes the knight. What else? yeah, Yeah, if it you doesn't move the king, work. take the knight, and I don't have time to take on a5 there, for example, because then what happens is c2 and rook b1 check, and you're getting that queen really, really fast. Yeah. I'm concerned here for back row. This does not look right. Does not look right at all. Oh, man. Um, okay, is rook takes a5 instantly losing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. You could even just push c2 if you want. Okay, so don't can't take on a4. What else can back row do? Oh my gosh, he's his time is low, his His Wi-Fi time is is low. bad. I think he's at best going to get an end game where the thing is, though, is, is he losing connection as well? He's at one bar. Yeah, I saw that too, and his time is ticking. Uh, Uh-oh. uh okay. Someone call back row. Get the Yeah. internet back, buddy. Yeah, take some some notes. You guys have had amazing... Oh, gosh. This is going to be a disconnect. Oh, no. Three, No. two, one. Oh, he disconnected. Oh, he disconnected. Alexandri disconnected. Oh, my goodness. The Wi-Fi flag is here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh... Upgrade your internet teams, please. This is so painful. Oh, man. I mean, it was a tough position anyway, but... It's funny because I, I'm, I'm used to the, the French people surrendering with flags, but not like that. <laughs> Good one. Oh, man. They, they needed to mix it up, you know? The usual forfeit is not... Oh, God. Uh, now, to make up for that, though, I think we honestly are going to see our first tie. Because in Agress, I'm on that game right now watching, she Yeah. is going to lose most likely. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it plays out here. If she can hold a draw, that's the match for the snowballs. Right. Okay, just pulled it up. Um, no pressure. <laughs> Entire team's result depending on you. Yeah. It's not too scary though if if you know if you lose in a worse position, at least it's a tie, so that's not bad. I think if anyone's feeling the pressure, it's black here. Yeah, I'm sure that actually I'm not sure that he's necessarily aware of the other results like I don't know if they're all playing in the same place or you know, he's obviously Right. laser focused on his game right now. So I don't know if he's been checking. He might be doing the same thing as MVL and scrolling through games, but Right. then again, he is in a more complicated position. Right. So the reason that I'm so sure that this is winning is you've got those two extra pawns and I'm thinking at worst, it's going to be one extra pawn and it's probably going to be that C pawn. And I'm just thinking ahead to like a potential Lucina type of position. Okay, after... So it seems like he's going to drop the... I don't know what it actually I is think trying what to he do wants here. to do is, I think he wants to take the H pawn. Mm -hmm. Like But I, he's I, dropping the E pawn. right. No, I think what he wants to do is play like rook G4, rook H4 Uh, yeah. and trade maybe even the other two for the G pawn. Mm -hmm. And Oh, he can play rook h4 now. so rook H4, uh, rook takes C6, rook takes H2, king takes E4, rook F2. Cut that king off and just win Right. that position as a Lucina. 
Yep, classic, classic endgame conversion here. Let's see if he's booked up on these Rook and Pawn endgames. The only thing you have to be careful of in positions like what uh, position I just said, for example, is uh, mm -hmm. if white has time to play a move like Rook C1 and check from the, the front of the pawn. So, okay, black is this... just going to go take that pawn. Uh, okay. Uh, what? This is just a clear... This is very easily winning. Just take and Win, King yeah. G3. Right. She's um, thinking maybe takes takes g5, king f5 is a drop. Whoa, wait, whoa, whoa. That is awful technique. Oh my goodness, what? This yeah, is a draw so now. <laughs> oh my, what am I looking at, Alexandra? That's so bad. What on earth? Oh my goodness, well, this well, is a draw. I don't even know if I believe it's a draw if we're going to see some crazy moves again. <laughs> Could happen. Yeah, that was that was very easy. Rook takes e4. Um, or I mean, I won't say very easy, but they had a little bit of time to figure it out. Oh my goodness! No, 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 no. But but Black, remember, was faced with the decision. He's got more than a minute. Exactly. Uh, uh, King f3. Only try. And and so Black. By not taking what on e4, am I at here? now the Marseille migraines are going to lose the match. No, because well, it's now, now it's... It's, it's winning. Alexander, I, I, the end game I'm looking at, I don't have words for. Well, this is a uh, this is what coaches show their students when students say, "But our rook and pawn end game is really important, coach." Uh. Uh. <laughs> G two. And I'm not even. And now we're I, getting back to the. <laughs> I don't even yeah, believe the, that this is going to be converted. Please play rook, h8, rook h8 and king h2 is just a very fast win. Yeah. Oh, that's true. It's even easier when the yeah, pawn's on f2 that's and what the I mean. on if, f1. You have to make a bridge, but here you just cut off the h file, move your king up, and promote. That's true. It, it's just you don't have to do the whole bridge thing. All you need, because white's yeah. rook, by the way, should not be on the g file. It should be on the h file to to force yep. the Lucina to happen. Yep, to keep playing the rook back on h7 and h8. Yeah, okay. okay. Still, we've actually seen this technique twice, so... Yep. Um, uh, chat, chat, you know this hammer saying, yeah, I did do a rook and pawn endgame stream before, and we covered this, actually. <laughs> um, hammer was there, too. Was oh, okay, there. that's the reference. Rook yeah. g8, and now... Now he can put rook f5, or actually, no, sorry, rook e4, yeah. Yeah. Because rook f5, then the king comes back on the, the e file, which you don't want to do. Oof. Nice. Nice. So this is actually going to be a draw. And by the way, I, I shouldn't say, or I should just point out for those wondering, like, uh, of course, that was a really, really unfortunate disconnect there for back row. But mm -hmm. I think he was worse. Like, I think he was on the yeah. losing side of that position. And whether he disconnected or not, his time was really low. He was going to be down a pawn two pass pawns in a rook end game, and I think that the overall result of the match may have honestly been the same. So right. potentially not the biggest loss, but of course, anything can happen. Like, th this end game was just ridiculous. So if Becquerel was still in it for his team, he could definitely have pulled some magic. So I, I don't want to say that... Um, that it, was... it would have been the same result without... Yeah, that because that's, that's obviously not true, but it's probably not... You know, it's not like he was in a... Checkmate in one position and he disconnected. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. Do you, so, do you? How do you feel about the eight eight result? Do you think it's fair after the game we just witnessed? <laughs> uh, I I don't know what's fair anymore, Alexandra. Is, is it? Is this really fair? What I just had to look at? Yeah. I, I, the, it's probably unfair for you, Amon. <laughs> you did not sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. Actually, I did sign up for this. That was pretty exciting. Eight eight. Uh, is that? Have we seen many draws uh, or ties in the Pro Chess League? as well because uh, that's uh the minnesota blizzards drew the san jose hackers but that's okay. the only other tie in this round wow okay yeah so that's it's just a uh, a result where you know that going into that final round it was pretty right. exciting uh, yeah because man th this uh, this match really really delivered and uh what can we say about the the matchups on the day alexandra i mean how did you feel about some of the the underdogs your dark horse any of the results surprise you 
Um, well, I did say the Barcelona Raptors were probably going to take it away, and they did. And the only other thing I said was that the board four for Barcelona Raptors was going to do well. Alejandro Diaz, and he did, even though he lost his his last game. He played very well throughout. Um, what What about yours? Well, uh, Laura, I can't say was. Um, I mean, she had that uh, really good game that we happened to catch where um, she converted a nice. Uh, a nice sacrifice um, mm -hmm. where White sort of refused to draw. But, okay, my dark horse pick maybe wasn't the most impactful. Um, also, the Turtles did go down to the Berlin Bears 10-6. to um, mm -hmm. But I wasn't surprised by too many of the results. Actually, one of the most surprising results to me was that the Norway Gnomes didn't win by a bigger margin. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you were you were talking about that the entire time, and at least the, the Mosquitoes put in a good fight there much more than a good fight actually yeah. it was it was getting really close at times yeah that actually could have gone either way um, yeah i have to say it's probably still encouraging for the mosquitoes team to, to do so well uh, because mm -hmm. they're without like some of their their much higher rated guys in the lineup um right like, i'm pretty um, sure and, and the, isn't mm -hmm. jordan on, on that team as well like they have a few people who are maybe busy in like tata steel right now um which is of course in the netherlands so you have people right. that are just maybe unavailable yeah. to play and yeah they, they have Lo loke van wheely and uh, jordan van forest but neither of them have played games yet because right. like you said they're busy right yeah so that team is only going to get stronger so pay attention to the mosquitoes is is what i would say and yeah. uh yeah I, mean, honestly, I think did mvl lose uh did his team lose last week as well or i can't remember i'm just trying to think if the the snowballs or the migraines uh, are on a uh Bit of a setback here because the, the, Mar the Marseille migraines, from what I remember, they weren't doing too well. Let me just check that real quick. I think they were playing the Mosquitoes. I just can't remember if they won that match or not. But either way, a draw for for them this week is uh, you know not not ideal, and they're they're gonna have to evaluate back Crows' the internet right. issues. Yeah, and yeah. So the the migraine Marseille, sorry, the Marseille <laughs> migraines lost against the Amsterdam Mosquitoes right. seven nine. Which yeah. So not the best start to the 2019 season yeah. for a pretty heavy top stack team, right? With MVL and back row. Yeah, I'm going to, we should send them a link to, you know, some IT support, help them out there. That was, yes. that was not, not fun to watch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much the wrap up. The Gnomes, the Raptors, the Bears were victorious this, this week in the Central Division. And then, of course, we just saw that pretty exciting uh, draw or, or tied match between the Snowballs in the Marseille migraines um, to yep. finish off. And I think this is going to continue the Barcelona Raptors being the top performing team of the season so far, at least in terms of how many points they have in their division. So right. uh, this is exciting. They, they might give the uh, Armenian Eagles and the Chengdu Pandas a run for their money. Yes. Oh, actually, sorry. St. Louis Archbishops is actually doing better slightly. And the chess bras. How could I offend you like that? For, forgive me. Yeah. I was gonna say we're we're, doing, we're not doing too bad uh, over there. Did you forget about us uh, all the way over there in the other division uh, there, Alexandra? Uh, I just yeah. Uh, we'll we'll, 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 yeah, we'll talk about that later. Us. Yeah, Pump, pumped it up. <laughs> um, so obviously we're we're wrapping up here, but we can definitely say, of course, that all the teams are gonna be back in action next week. Of course, uh, pro league is the nice thing about it is that I mean it's just it's just weekly. It's very very exciting to to follow. Uh, next Tuesday and Thursday, we'll be back mm -hmm. with the with the matches, and uh, of course, we'll see if some of these teams that have had a bad start can can come back a little bit, or whether the teams that are on top are going to continue to dominate their uh, their divisions. Right. Yeah, yeah and, and I we'll think be, what's we'll the... be back doing commentary together again, actually, on Tuesday at five fifteen p.m. PST, uh, eight fifteen p.m. EST and you guys can convert the rest. So if you guys want to come back, we'll be here. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, of course, remember that I think we're going to raid uh, Hikaru after uh, the stream as well, who is, uh, I guess he's live. I don't know what he's doing, maybe adopting someone or playing Puzzle Rush or something. But... Right, or... Oh, he's playing against uh, MVL, actually. Oh, he's playing MVL. So there you go. Yeah. That, that's where the fun goes after this. Right. That's where the fun goes after this. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for the pro chess league coverage for today in the Central Division. 
Alexandra, do you have uh, anything you want to say uh, as we sign off? I had a lot of fun today. Uh, study your Rook and Pawn endgames. <laughs> <laughs> and who are yeah. you speaking to with that message? To myself, obviously. To yourself, yeah. yeah. Just a good piece of general advice. Exactly. For what about you, listening. Oman? Yeah, but thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, the Pro League coverage. We're eventually going to be raiding uh, Hikaru's channel, so check him out. The fun, the chess fun doesn't end for today, but hope you guys uh, enjoyed the show. And uh, like we're saying, Pro Chess League coverage will be back next week. Bye for yep. now. See you guys soon.